LSU, an old rivalry renewed. Their first meeting is SEC foes. LSU, the highest one loss team in the BCS standing, so SEC and national championship implications in this game today. LSU won the toss and deferred, putting its defense on the field first, which means momentarily we'll get a look at a Texas high school legend who is becoming a national phenom in Johnny Manziel. Johnny football as he's known around these parts. Trey Williams and Uzoma Wachiku are deep. James Hairston to kick off for LSU. And that's twice now the ball is blown off the tee. It is windy here in College Station. And so we'll see if Hairston gets help from a hold on the kickoff. Russell Shepard will help Hairston. For the opening kick. And we're underway from Kyle Field. And the wind helps the kick sail out of play. So AM will start on its 25. Johnny Manziel, number two in the nation in total offense, leads the SEC in rushing, but he hadn't faced the defense like the LSU Tigers. No, he certainly hasn't, but he has taken College Station by storm. And really, the thing that jumps out to me, you could talk about all the numbers. Last week, you can see what he did against Louisiana Tech. What jumps out to film on me is the competitive nature of this 19-year-old kid. He's going to need every ounce of those competitive juices against some kind of defense that he has not faced so far this year. He's accounted for 24 touchdowns, 14 passing, 10 rushing. Redshirt freshman from Tybee High School in Kerrville, Texas. On his 25-yard line. And a pass out in the flat that's caught by McNeil across the 30-yard line. And spun down short of the first down at the 34. That's a gain of nine. Texas A&M, an up-tempo team. They are going to run as many plays as possible. They want to see about the conditioning of this LSU front. And they want to spread them out, get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Ryan Swope is back after concussion from a week ago. He's their slot receiver, number 25. He presents a lot of matchup nightmares. He's at the bottom of your screen. And Manziel will run. And Manziel will not get the first down. So hard against these fast linebackers and defensive ends to run toward the sideline. And then you've got those defensive tackles who eat up space in the middle. Absolutely. The game plan for LSU is to use Montgomery, use Mingo, constrict the pocket. Do not let Johnny Manziel outside that pocket. If he throws from inside, they've won on defense. Well, no gain on the play. Third and one. Manziel has a first down completion across the 40. Nehemiah Hicks. Uh, nice throw there. Very calm in the pocket, Manziel. He's really undergone a transformation since spring ball when he was very erratic. And head coach Kevin Sumlin told him, hey, if you turn the ball over, you're not going to play. I don't care how talented you are. Yeah, he was a wild stallion in the spring. Very loose with the football, turned it over. No team can win with a quarterback that does that. Very impressed with the way in the offseason he came in and was on point when they started in fall camp taking care of the football. Manziel to the air again, throwing toward the sideline. Diving attempt, incomplete McNeil, covered by Jalen Mills, a true freshman corner. They're going to challenge LSU. If they're going to play man-to-man -man coverage, Texas A&M has got to complete some balls down the field. This time, true freshman Mills, as you mentioned, good coverage, just not enough speed by McNeil to get by him on the second level. Inside run on second and ten. Molina with a huge hole. And Molina all the way to the 46 of LSU. That's hard to do against this LSU defense. They gave up just 34 yards rushing and 35 to Marcus Lattimore in the game against South Carolina in Baton Rouge last week. They'll keep it on the ground on first and ten. And another good running lane off the right edge. Molina stacked up 
After a gain of about five at the 41 by Kevin Minter and Eric Reed. This AM offense will stretch you horizontally all across the field, and it's difficult for defenses when they run that inside zone, that inside trap, and the quarterback draw. When you're defending 53 yards sideline to sideline, it's easy to get creased up the middle. Seven play in this drive, and an empty set for Manziel. Manziel will swing it over to the far side. Molina gets a block and a first down. It's hammered to the ground of the 28 by Farrell, but it's a 13-yard gain. Texas A&M operating very smoothly on this opening drive. They scored on their opening possession the last three games. Great blocking by these wide receivers and backs. Anybody that's in the formation has got to be responsible for blocking on this screen game for A&M. That's what makes it so effective. First down inside the 30. Kristen Michael in the game now, flanking Manziel. Cliff Kingsbury, the offensive coordinator, says Manziel now can operate as he pleases in terms of getting him out of bad plays and into good ones. And the audible's here, and it's caught on the sideline. Boy, Reed just hammers freshman Thomas Johnson to the ground short of the first down gain of about four and what that means you give a, a redshirt freshman quarterback freedom at the line of scrimmage what they're asking him to do is look at the box are there a number of defenders in the box that I can run the football if there's too many then I'll throw the quick screen and so far Manziel has taken this freedom from Cliff Kingsbury and really run with it and that's why his running game on draws and the like has really flourished in the last couple of weeks here's second and six for Manziel and standing in the pocket, everybody covered. Manziel scrambling and incomplete. Now, what you were talking about in the last play, Brian, he couldn't do that week one against Florida, a game which they led at half, but then he was shut down, Manziel was, in the second half by that Gator D. I think Florida was taken by surprise with Johnny Manziel. Nobody knew who he was, what he could do. And Cliff Kingsbury is telling us, you know, he didn't really know all of his reads and his hots and where things were. He was just snapping the ball and making plays. Very different quarterback now. He's operating this offense, and Kingsbury has got more and more confidence in him. Play 10 of the drop. Third down and six from the 24 of LSU. And it's an option, and Molina gets a block. Inside the 20. Inside the 10. All the way to the six-yard line. The ball came out, but Molina was down. It's first and goal, and out. We talked about the blocking on the outside that time. A great block by Ryan Swope. Got the, the lane. Big play on first down. And then quickly to the line. Here's Molina left side. And he's tackled near the one-yard line by Lamine Barrow. An impressive drive by Texas A&M. And Barrow shaken up. They've had a lot of injuries on defense and departures, including Tyron Matthew, who kicked off the team in August. It's a very young Tiger defense, talented but young. And Barrow, one of the guys they cannot afford to lose. Well, they can't afford to lose him because his backups are both true freshmen, and they're already playing so many young guys on defense. But as you said, a very impressive drive by AM. They've come out and done a couple of different things, throwing the football on first and second down, a third down conversion from, uh, from Johnny Manziel, and then the option game, inside runs, very impressed. Kevin Sumlin told us yesterday, we knew after the Florida game when we didn't get banged around in that game, hey, hey we can play. And, and their offensive line is their strength. And they've got two tackles who will be in the NFL, Luke Jokel, Jake Matthews. And so far, they're mauling LSU. Absolutely. They're blowing them off the line. I mean, Thanks. between these five guys, 122 career starts. You said it. This is the strength of the entire AM offense and defense. This team in general, I think this is a key. They didn't have to do anything different in game planning for this defensive front from LSU. Cliff Kingsbury told us, we're just going to block them as normal. I trust our two offensive tackles to block Mingo and Montgomery. Let's see how they do on goal line here with LSU having six down linemen, second and goal. Michael is in. Touchdown, Texas A&M. They blew him off the ball again. Fifth rushing touchdown for Michael. Twelve play, 75 yard drive and 414. Bertolat on for the extra point and it's off the upright. 
And no good. Now, despite the missed point after, Texas A&M very balanced passing and running, and they hammered on the goal line in to take an early 6-0 lead. 6-0 advantage after an impressive 12-play drive that took over four minutes. Bertolette to kick off from the 35 into the win. Michael Ford is deep for LSU. And a short kick taken by Landry on the 20. He's up around the 33-yard line. And welcome into the booth alongside Brian Greasy. I'm Dave Passion. Brian, a lot of people wondering going into the week, how would Johnny Manziel do against this LSU defense? Did pretty well in that first drive. What happens now when LSU adjusts? Well, I think even as good as this offense has been all year, I think there was still a little bit of question and doubt as to how it would look against LSU. Great first drive, mix it up, run, pass, inside run, outside run. But they did this against Florida, and after they got adjustments from Florida's defense, they shut them down so the key going forward will be how do they adjust to LSU LSU on first and ten gives it to Spencer Ware for a couple Zach Mettenberger the quarterback first year starter who has not thrown a touchdown pass in SEC games and this team has struggled to score three total touchdowns in three league games but a win last week against South Carolina after a loss at Florida the week before. The thing about Mettenberger is his completion percentage just has not been good, especially against the tougher foes. He's completed about half of his passes, and that's just not good enough. There's Ware. And stacked up. No gain on the play. The Shazer Everett, who has moved to corner this week because he's bigger, and they're fearful of those big running backs for LSU getting on the edge. Everett showing his tackling ability there, sticking his face in the gut of where. A&M's going to try to get as many guys around the line of scrimmage as possible. Everett just comes up from the safety alignment and sure tackling last week against Louisiana Tech. The secondary for A&M missed way too many tackles. It was almost embarrassing to watch. A big focus for them is tackling these big 230-pound backs from LSU when they do break the line of scrimmage in the secondary. This is where a and wants the LSU offense. Mettenberger in a passing situation, and it's tipped at the line and incomplete. A three and out for LSU on its opening possession. AM decides to bring pressure. They play man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. They're going to try to rattle Zach Meckenberger. They brought him right up the middle. Creative look. It looks like Sean Porter, the outside linebacker, got a finger on that football. Yes, he did. Good play. So they brought Porter. He was being blocked by true freshman right tackle Vidal Alexander. LSU has had a lot of problems on the offensive line. They're starting two freshmen on the right side. Into the end zone for a touchback. They will come out to the 20. 65 yard punt by Brad Wing, but a net of only 45. 6 0 AM. In a uh, situation in Baton Rouge where bomb scare was phoned in. This one was uh, via email, but nothing was found. First down for Texas AM from its 20 yard line, leading 6 0 after an opening drive that went 12 plays. And over four minutes and a touchdown. Manziel looking to set up the screen. Instead throws underneath and it's caught by Ryan Swope. Close to a first down. Here's Reese in the studio. Dave Taco Bell studio update. Urban Meyer said the number of big plays is Ohio State defense giving up. Absurd. Complete absurdity. And on the first play, Caleb Turbos to Akeem Shavers, 83 yards. Boiler up, 6-0. And it's 6-0 here, a and as Manziel gets drilled on the near sideline by Kevin Minter for a loss of a couple, and there's a penalty flag down as well. Uh, Reese talked about the struggles on defense for Ohio State, and you know, Purdue, a team that is in desperation mode with Wisconsin and the lead, a commanding lead in the leaders' division, the only one of the four teams eligible that actually has a win in conference play. Wisconsin has two and they play Minnesota right now. 
It's the first time we got uh, Johnny Manziel outside of the pocket. Looked like a design run. Well defended by LSU and took a big hit at the end. Illegal motion. Illegal shift, excuse me. Number 25. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. It's on Ryan Swope. Our impact players brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Yeah, we know Johnny Manziel is going to have an impact on this game. Mike Evans, a freshman wide receiver, big game a week ago. And then defensively, can Demontre Moore in that front four keep up against his power for LSU running game? Manziel with a perfect throw to Mike Evans for a first down. 37th catch of the year for Evans, another redshirt freshman coming off his second straight 100-yard receiving game. Yeah, and he leads the team in receptions as just a, a redshirt freshman, former basketball player. Here's Michael off the left side, and he drives forward to the 39 for five yards. That, to me, is what's most surprising early on here is how AM is running the ball against LSU. Well, you can see how they attack the perimeter and then change up with the inside run. Deadly combination. Manziel able to shake a defender. And a good play in the open field by Lost, and otherwise Manziel still running. It is a first down, game this, six. This is the matchup we were looking at. Defensive ends for LSU versus the speed of Manziel that time. Edwards tried to come upfield. A quick fake. You just cannot prepare for the shiftiness and the speed in practice of a guy like Johnny Manziel. Broke the SEC record for a single game total offense twice, a record previously held by Archie Manning. Manziel pulls it back. Wide open in the middle of the field is Evans. Inside the 35-yard line. A gain of about 20 for Texas A&M and Johnny Football. There is an injured LSU Tiger. It's Josh Downs, starting defensive tackle, who's been banged up off and on this year. And they're going to need all their defensive linemen, especially if they're going to be on the field for 85-90 plays. Absolutely. And that, that last play, just a slant on the weak side. Watch the play action affect Barrow 57. He comes up, doesn't know where that ball is going to go, and right behind him comes the receiver. Just well designed in the balance of this offense. And Cliff Kingsbury, a physical receiver in Evans at six foot five, 220 pounds, can get off of that jam. And so far, not good news to play man-to-man -man coverage from LSU against this AM offense. Evans hobbling a little bit as well. Bax, did you sleep in Corso's tent? <laughs> As long as I'm not in the dog's tent, the doghouse. You needed it after your two hours on Thursday after doing <laughs> studio. Here's a throwback to Molina, who's wide open with blockers out there. Molina, touchdown, a &M. There is a penalty flag down back at the 25-yard line. And it's coming back. Chop block. Out in space. That's where a defender is engaged by one offensive player, and then a second offensive player comes in and hits thigh or below while the man is engaged. They had the 19 penalties last week and survived that. Personal foul. Chop block. Number 51. Offense, 15-yard penalty replay, first down. It's on the left guard, Jarvis Harrison. It got the flow going one way with Menzel, threw it back to Molina, who was wide open. Take a look. Here's the guard right here. He's going to come out and get out on the lead on this block. The question is, for a chop block, is there a, another player engaged? And right there, he's engaged, and they get the block. It's actually the left yeah. tackle, Luke Jokel, who they call that penalty on. The combination of those two high and low is a chop block. Spot foul. Ball at the 40-yard line. Empty set for Manziel on first down and 16. And Manziel running around. And the pass under throw. He had him too. McNeil was open. Reed reacted but late. And it's second down. Wow. Great job. Again, Johnny Manziel, what he's known for, buying time, creating when the play breaks down. And he had a receiver wide open, just didn't get enough on that football. Manziel completing 67% of his passes. And he's also rushing for 113 yards a game, which leads the conference among all players in running the football. 
He'll throw here on second down and long. And a long pass to a wide open Mike Evans who had a lot of space. Wrestled down by Micah Eugene. The ball came out. Let's see if they rule Evans down. And they do. It's a first down for AM inside the 20. LSU plays man to man coverage hard with Simon, their best player. That's just a back shoulder fade. Evans reads it. Manziel throws it to the outside. And it's a big conversion for AM. And now. Ego Ferguson, another defensive tackle, is down on the field for LSU. Yeah, Josh Downs hurt earlier, and now Ferguson. They only prefer to play four guys, but AM is on pace to run 85, 90 plays. I mean, you need these guys fresh and healthy, and that's not the case right now for LSU. I think what's impressive is you had a huge momentum play. You think you score a touchdown on a throwback screen, you get a penalty. Sometimes that can throw offenses off rhythm and behind schedule, but Johnny Manziel doesn't lose confidence. He stays composed and gets his team right back in position first and 10 at the 20. Almost impress as impressive as Manziel is the freshman Mike Evans, who's had three catches already in this game, 39 on the year. Coming up tonight on ABC, You'll either see Florida State, Miami, or Baylor, Texas. Texas having all kinds of problems on defense. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows 8, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. I think the Longhorns get it going. I told you last week to stop picking Texas. <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you got I, Baylor this week? <laughs> we didn't pick that game, so I didn't have to all make right. that choice, but certainly they've got... Uh, a lot of issues and a lot on their plate and Baylor we know they can score a lot of points and, and the biggest disappointment has been that defense obviously for, for Texas. In the red zone where LSU has struggled opponents are six of six touchdowns in the red zone in conference play. Manziel taken off but ran right into Benny Logan. And Logan swallows Manziel at the 20 for a one yard loss. LSU finally says well we're had enough of this. They brought two guys off the edge. No linebacker look. They wanted to contain as well as pressure. Les Miles if he would have broken that at the line of scrimmage there was nobody left but the defensive tackles did their job. Second down and 11. Manziel pulling it back in the pass high. 13th attempt by Manziel, nine completions. Now you got third and 11. Man, and though terrific on third down, and for whatever reason, they, they excel on third and long. One of the best teams in the country at third and six or longer. It's third and 11. Big reason why is, is Manziel extending plays and his ability to use his feet. So right here, you tell him, your young quarterback, get a completion, maybe a break attack and get a first down, or use your legs just to not turn the ball over because a field goal is huge in games like this, especially against an LSU offense that has struggled to score. LSU's only run three plays in this game. Pressure coming up the middle. And Menzel running to his right. Tripped up at the 20, stayed in, but did not get the first down. Eventually out of bounds at the 14. So fourth down and about five. And Texas A&M will attempt a field goal. Well, he creates. He extended that play. LSU just did a great job in the secondary and man-to-man -man coverage locking on those receivers. And we talked with John Chavis about what they have to focus on defensively. And one of the big issues is when we play man-to-man -man coverage, this play is going to average 10 seconds rather than six. You've got to stay on your receiver because he'll throw the ball late. Taylor Bertolette with a 32-yard attempt. You see the wind whipping. And the snap high, but the spot good, and the kick is good to make it nine to nothing. Texas A&M. Johnny Manziel's thrown for over 100 yards. They had a creative blitz that they used to contain Johnny Manziel. They dropped the defensive tackles and bring the linebackers who are faster and can chase down Johnny Manziel and create confusion. A couple plays ago, they tried to do the same thing. Take a look at the edges. They're going to bring pressure. They're going to bring Minter up the middle. Creative ways to try to contain Johnny Manziel. He got outside here, but the good coverage downfield and pursuit brought up a field goal attempt. How much growth have you seen in Manziel from that Florida game, which was AM's first game of the season? Well, it's the first game he ever played in college football, so and it's against what we know now is one of the best defenses in all of college football at the University of Florida. And so the expectations were low for Johnny Manziel. The last six or seven weeks, 
the expectations are through the roof. And so far in the first quarter of this game, he's met each one. And remember, too, that game against Florida was after the Gators barely beat Bowling Green at home. And now Florida's number two in the BCS stands. LSU is number six. A top-ranked team that only has one loss. A dangerous play there. He didn't have to run it out, but Ford elects to, and he won't even reach the 15. Let's go to Reese Davis now in the studio. Dave, Sports Center right now presented by Discover Card. Barry, Z uh, Barry Zito siding. Went seven and two-thirds, strikeout six. First postseason win since 06. Giants stay alive. Game six against the Cardinals. Sunday night, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN Radio. And the Tigers just sit back and wait. Now Zito, what an up-and-down career he has had there in San Francisco after signing that huge contract. Three plays, three yards for LSU, and now they're starting this drive on their 12-yard line. True freshman Jeremy Hill, who had a good game, is in the backfield with a pass. And a gain of about seven on first down, caught by Boone. Well, they will not let us talk with Johnny Manziel. And so we're doing a lot of observing. What's the latest observance, Jim Brown? That's Dave. That's all we can do is observe him down here. And with the exception of leading his team out of the tunnel and a small pep talk before the game, he's really been keeping it to himself over here on the sideline. Hill appears to have the first down. Let's go back down to Jen Brown with more on Manziel. Well, guys, we've talked about Cliff Kingsbury giving him control of the offense down there on the line. He's got to be happy with what he's done so far because both times he's come off the field, Kingsbury's not gone up and spent much time talking to him. So obviously happy with what Manziel's doing right now. All right, Jen, and in fairness to Kevin Sumlin, he doesn't let any freshman, regardless of who they are, talk with the media. And that's why we're unable to speak with Manziel. First down of the 22. Michael Ford in the game. Mettenberger to throw. And another completion, Odell Beckham for a gain of nine. 23rd catch on the year for Beckham. Dustin Harris spun him down. This is a big drive for LSU. You've given up two scoring drives on defense. You went three and out on offense. You're down 10 nothing already on the road in a hostile environment. They've got to do something here on offense. The pitch to Ford, and he will get the first down and more. Banged out of play at the 38. Demontre Moore, who leads AM and tackles as a defensive end, makes the stop. It's an interesting approach now from LSU offensively, going a little bit of up tempo, giving AM a little bit of their own medicine. Now they're going to have to use a little bit of a sugar huddle. Sometimes you get backed up as an offense, you want to get a first down, you want to get a momentum and tempo, you'll go no huddle, you get a couple of first downs, and then you'll take a breath and get back in the huddle. That way you don't play into the hands of a team that wants you to go up tempo. From the LSU 39. Somebody jumped on the right side of the formation. Prior to the snap, false start. 64. Offense. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. That's PJ Lonergan with that false snap. He bobbed his head and that drew Demontre Moore off from his left defensive end position. That's, that's the more first, and more of a point of emphasis this year. Yeah, it's the first time we've seen the crowd noise really affect the offenses. Take a look at them right here. Sometimes they'll use their head to, to signal when that ball is going to be snapped so that their other offensive linemen can see it. That looks like it's just a false start. So first and 15. Mettenberger. A long throw to the sideline is on the money to Beckham, who's able to hang on and get the first down. He has struggled throwing the football this year, but accurate so far today. This was a perfect throw against man-to-man -man coverage. Step up in the pocket, put that ball out on the sideline for Beckham. Zach Mettenberger was probably the most scrutinized and had the most pressure of any player in all of college football coming back at the beginning of this year. And he has been up and down, but so far it's been good in the passing game on this drive. 17-yard pass play in LSU and a and territory for the first time today. Porter coming in a blitz. It's picked up. Mettenberger going deep. Beckham is wide open, but he overthrew him. Those are the kind of plays that Mettenberger has not been making. Now, maybe the wind, which was from behind the quarterback, impacted that throw, but it was overshot by about four yards, and Beckham is shaken up on the play. Yeah, take a look. It's just a double post here. You're going to have one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Hard play action, and when you get two to take the inside route, it's man-to-man, -man. a great route by Beckham. That ball's thrown 
before he comes out of the break, and sometimes it's difficult to connect when a guy gets caught up on a corner. Now your best receiver is injured for second and ten. Mettenberger to throw again, and the pass is batted down. The second batted ball against a six foot five quarterback, which must mean the offensive line's not getting their hands on the DNs. That was a true freshman, Julian Obioha. Well, I was watching last week, and about 80% of the balls that Mettenberger threw in the game against South Carolina were to the outside of the field. What that tells a defensive lineman on the outside is get your hands up. Again, here on third and 10, I expect more of the same. This is the scenario where LSU cannot have full protection. They've got to get guys out in the route for options for Mettenberg. Four-man rush. Mettenberger steps up. Come on, Trey Moore, sacks him. The man who leads the SEC in sacks. Nine and a half now in the year for Moore. Take a look, they're going to come inside. He's going to get inside on Durasic, the left tackle. When you, when you have a protection where it's one-on-one, -on -one, Durasic on Moore, Moore is going to win that battle every time. Third and ten, very difficult to protect. And now Brad Wing, whose first punt sailed into the end zone, 65 yards. They'll try to angle this one. And fair caught right at the 20-yard line by Dustin Harris. So this could be a killer drive here if A&M can go down and get a oh. touchdown. Can LSU score? A&M's defense has looked good so far in the game. Could not have been a better start for Texas A&M. You come out in your two drives and you get points. Then you have a three and out on defense and then you get another stop sack. Uh, could not have been a better start and get this fan base, get this atmosphere involved, one of the most difficult places to play. And by the way, LSU has not experienced this. None of these players have ever been here to Kyle Field, so this is all new. Manziel looking for the screen, and it's knocked down and complete by Lamine Barrow. Mingo was back there, too. Never has a school forgotten the top 10 draft pick at quarterback so quickly in <laughs> Texas A&M. Ryan Tannehill goes number eight. He was the talk of the draft because he skyrocketed in April. And here's a guy that's replacing him. And nobody's talking about what was done last year with well, that position. Manziel's got a lot of the pieces that Tannehill had. This offensive line, Ryan Swope, Michael, some of these running backs. So a lot of the reason why Tannehill was successful is the same reason why this is not just a one-man show with Johnny Manziel. And Mike Sherman, the head coach last year, is now in Miami with Tannehill. As another pass is deflected and incomplete. That was Sam Montgomery, the outstanding right defensive end. So if you can't get to the quarterback, they'll coach defensive linemen to at least get your hands up, especially with a quarterback that's only six feet tall in Johnny Manziel. Third time already in this football game that we've had a batted ball. So a lot of different ways that defensive lines can affect the game, not just sacking the quarterback. 26th play of the opening quarter for Texas a and third and 10. Manziel into traffic. Looked like there was some contact, Swope and Reed. And here comes a flag, or a late flag. The back judge came racing in and threw the penalty flag. It'll be an automatic first down. Had Swope caught that, he would have been about four yards shy of the first down. Reed is so aggressive. He's made so many plays, so many big plays for this LSU defense, and he wants that football. Did he get there a little early? That's interference. Defense. LSU brought pressure, as we've talked about, off both edges to contain. Here they come off both sides, and then Reed just gets there a little bit early. I think that's a good, good call. Unnecessary, as you said, because Ryan Swope wasn't going to get the first down. And out of the year again, lobs one, and is pulled in near midfield. Nice catch by McNeil. Again, he had two men on him. Eric Reed was the first guy there, and then Barrow came over as well. It's a big play.
Yeah, you have a linebacker on a receiver. That advantage offense every time. And this is what this offense is all about, creating matchups. Lamine Barrow on a wide receiver is not good for LSU. 24 yards, and they go so quickly that there's no chance to review it. So a gain of four on the next play. Barrow taking down the quarterback, Manziel. It was hard to tell in that previous play if it was actually caught, and maybe they did signal it in before the snap. LSU head coach called timeout. And, and unless Miles Smart, knowing that it's going to be awfully hard for them to signal down to say we're going to review this further, calls a timeout. He was right in front of it, so he knows whether it was caught or not. Calls a timeout so that he can LSU challenge. LSU challenging the ruling on the previous play of a completed pass. A further play is on a further review. Again, it was right in front of him, so... Yeah, absolutely. I think Les Miles comes into this game knowing a high tempo offense. I'm going to call it if there's any question, just call a timeout. Again, he's got to maintain possession all the way to the ground. Well, he's got it there. Let's see when Reed comes in if he knocks it out. And it has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn it, the ruling in the field. It looks like the first time he is down is when his rear end hits the ground there. The question is, does he control that ball all the way to the ground? And I think you're right. I think Les Miles had the, the best view of that in the house from where he was standing to the see if that ball came out. Greasy, the problem is you can't see the ball. So do you rule, even though you see his arms, and it looks like he doesn't have the ball, and you see two hands uh, from that other angle, because you can't see the ball, how can you overturn it? Well, absolutely. The call on the field is a, a catch. And so they've got to have that indisputable evidence to overturn that. And so far from those angles, it's been difficult to have that. And if he loses this challenge, not only will he not have a challenge the rest of the game, but he'll lose a timeout here in the first half. Back and take one more look here. He's got possession there. But he's got to complete it completed all the way to the ground. Now Barrel rips it. Is the, ball, it. is the ball in his possession there? Is it look a little loose? The ball looks loose. loose. It certainly looks loose from that angle. And if that's, I think that could go either way. And again, they, they have to be 100% certain to overturn a ruling on the field. Absolutely. And let me say this. I think it was an incomplete pass, but that's not the question. The question right. is, is there right. video evidence to overturn this? So uh, we'll see where it goes. So far, Texas A&M with 185 yards of offense against an LSU D that allowed 220 last week. After further review, the pass was incomplete. You could just hear how windy it was. So pass incomplete. And that's what we thought. The ball yep. was out before he was down. So that's a good call. And they have to figure out now what down is it, how much time's on the clock, where to spot the ball. And they did that pretty quickly. Usually it takes a little longer on replays where you have an overrule situation so they can get what hash mark, down distance clock, all that. It'll be second and 10 from the 25 of AM. I wonder where the, the leadership of this LSU defense is. They've come out now and they've given up two scores. You know, the leaders, uh, Eric Reed, Sam Montgomery, those are the two guys. Minter, they've got to take a stand. They're the strength of this team. They've got to get a stop here on second and 10. Manziel gets rid of it quickly and Swope on the catch. Brought down at the 32 yard line by Minter, who was a linebacker out in coverage. So third down and three. Got a lot of options with this down a distance. Well, and this, this offense is almost impossible to stop on third down because of the mobility of Manziel. But they also have the backs they can give it to. Mingo may have been offside. So free play for Manziel. Off the hand of Mike Evans incomplete. There's actually another flag on the far side of the field. So two penalty markers down. And again, Evans shaken up. Three catches, 52 yards, but we've seen him hobble to the sideline several times. Mingo on the near side jump. Maybe there was something going on on the other side there's, of the field as well. There's, uh, there's unnecessary penalties and, and unforced errors. Mingo trying to get a rush, gets off, off sides, and 
That's a free first down. You can't do that. Disciplined defenses just do not do that. And I think there was a penalty in the secondary on one of the defenders. Play. Offside. 49 defense. That penalty is declined. Holding number 24 defense. That's a 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. So that's on Farrell Simon. And that's two first downs for AM on this drive by LSU penalties. And Simon, they were going to have first down anyway, but then Simon one-on-one -on, -one on Evans. That was not the call. That was the offsides. And then the bottom, the back judge threw that in late. First down on the 42. Manziel completes it. Loose in the middle of the field is Kenrick McNeil. So they've targeted a lot so far in this game. He came in with just seven catches, but he's got a couple already in this ball game. Gain of seven, second down and three. <laughs> Run play, Molina cuts it back and has the first down into LSU territory to the 43-yard line. Ronald Martin brings him down. But again, AM on the ground, almost 70 yards rushing. Jake Matthews, the right tackle there, blew his man off the ball. Mingo, he was 10 yards downfield. Right now, LSU's got to find a way to stop this interior running game of AM. I never thought I'd say that coming into the day. Manziel shakes one defender and another. And then finally gets sandwiched at the 39-yard line. Game of three or four for the six foot one, 200 pound quarterback. That's what he's listed at anyway. Texas AM controlling the first quarter. 30 plays run. They've had it for over nine minutes and almost 200 yards. That's what LSU gave up almost for the entire game against South Carolina last week. And a win in Baton Rouge. I think LSU's had enough. It looks like they want to bring pressure. Watch the edges here. No safety. That corner's coming. And it's picked up. Manziel going deep for Swope. Overthrown. There was contact again with Reed before the ball was released, but no penalty flag. And it's third down and six. He was going for Swope. That's a missed opportunity. Yeah, Swope got behind the defense, stumbled a little bit, and then got knocked off by Reed. And that ball just thrown out of bounds. The yeah. first ball that I've seen Johnny Manziel throw inaccurately so far. Ninth play of the drive. Manziel in trouble, being chased. And Manziel hit and finally brought down at the 47-yard line. Kevin Minter brings him down. <laughs> Boy, the defense attack came in with an outstanding first quarter. On both sides of the ball, really, leading LSU nine to nothing. Everson punting to Beckham, who was hurt earlier in the game, but appears to be all right. And great job downfield. Joshua Stump there to pull it in inside the 10 yard line for Texas A&M. Let's take a look at the SEC West standings, both LSU and A&M with one loss. LSU has a bye week, then plays Bama at home on November 3rd. Texas A&M plays its next three games on the road, including at Mississippi State at Bama. Florida, South Carolina today. If Florida wins that one, they're in really good shape. Uh, that's all you need to know. Whoever wins that game is in great shape. And, and on this side in the West, both of these teams playing today, and and LSU control their destiny because they both play Alabama. Twelfth play of the game for LSU. AM has 11 first downs. And Mettenberger from the goal line just throws it away. Let's go to the studio and hear from Reese Davis. All right, gentlemen, it is time for Innovative Look, brought to you by AT&T. Tonight, many on ABC will see the Texas Longhorns against Baylor. Now, this is not the kind of defense Manny Diaz wants to see. I saw Kenny Vaccaro and some other guys in the secondary get gashed by Joseph Randall of Oklahoma State. They have got to improve their tackling against a high-powered offense now led by Nick Florence. Well, a has improved its tackling after struggling last week. Had a penalty flag down. You saw Beckham holding his back. Boy, we have seen LSU players go to the sideline a lot on both sides of the ball. 78 offense has the distance to the goal. Remain second half. That's the right tackle, Alexander. We've seen three defensive tackles. I think Manziel alone has injured those guys. We saw Benny Logan go down on the last play, but now no Beckham. 
for LSU, maybe their best receiver. Yeah, and now LSU's offense goes backwards inside the five-yard line, down 10 on the road, and this crowd is starting to have an effect on LSU's offensive communication. That was a fourth penalty on LSU. Jeremy Hill had two touchdowns last week. He'll get the carry here and driven down by Jonathan Mathis after a gain of two to the five-yard line. It'll bring up third down and 11. Take a look at Jonathan Mathis inside. Going to play off the block again. This offensive line for LSU has struggled. He's going up against Lael Collins, but down inside the five, you know they're going to run the football, sell out eight, nine guys to stop it. I've been very impressed with the way AM has played in the trenches so far. They'll play it safe on third and 11 as Hill gets good yardage, but still be a punt. At least that will allow Brad Wing to have room to punt from near the goal line rather than the back of the end zone. LSU is going to have to open up their offense a little bit to win this game. I think it's safe to say AM is going to score some points. Can Les Miles in this LSU offense keep up? You keep stalling on offense and giving Johnny Manziel opportunities, and it's not going to work. Hard to open it up when you're pinned inside your 10 as that punt gets hung up in the wind and kicks sideways. And AM will have great field position at its 46 yard line, leading LSU 9 0 early second quarter in cup. Well, we saw Odell Beckham come down, go down on the sidelines. They spent quite a bit of time working on him. They've decided to take him back to the locker room. They're going to evaluate his right rib. So, obviously, not good news for LSU, who's trying to get some offense going. Yeah, they don't have any weapons in the passing game, but he is one of them. Team leader and catches coming in. And been able to establish a ground game, 23 yards for LSU on the ground. Meanwhile, AM with 180 yards of total offense so far. Different look for LSU here. Look at three down linemen. They're traditionally a four down lineman front. Hands up, takes off inside LSU territory, and then grabbed and thrown down by Barrow. I'll tell you what, you put three down linemen out there. I know they've had some injuries, Logan, as we mentioned. But you put three down linemen out there, and they're going to automatically check to a quarterback draw. It's hard to stop Johnny Manziel with four guys, much less three. Manziel steps back, sees trouble, and throws it away. Was he outside the tackle box? It appears that he was, so third down. Now, is this scheme, would, or is this because guys well, are hurt for LSU on the defensive little, line? Maybe a little bit of both, but I'm not sure why they don't continue to run that quarterback draw. That's what I would do. They turn to the pass, and when you have three down linemen, that leaves eight guys in coverage. It's going to be very difficult to throw the ball against those loaded zones. Here's third and three. Big play for LSU's defense. They rush five. Manziel in trouble, but gets out of it. Heading for the sideline, has the first down, and then goes over the bench. No penalty flag thrown, and he's all right. We talked about who's faster, Johnny Manziel or Kiki Mingo. Well, we had the sample here. Mingo chasing him from the inside. Manziel has to get three yards for a first down, and he's just got too much speed. And Mingo's his fast guy. Yeah. I mean, he's still pretty fast as a D-end against a quarterback. Now Manziel now 19 yards rushing, 115 yards passing. Number two in the nation in total offense. Play clock down to two. They get the play off. And Manziel into traffic gets broken up. He was going underneath for Sabian Holmes. And it was broken up on the play by Jalen Collins, who's playing nickel today. Well, let's give some credit to LSU to make some adjustments. John Chavis in this drive has made a complete change in his philosophy he's gone with a different front he's brought blitzes on each of the first four plays and played man-to-man -man coverage on the on the week on the back side and so far it's been effective there was movement on the right side of the line so All start. number 70 offense five yard penalty remain second down and that's a right guard Cedric Abuhi be interesting to see what Kevin Sumlin and Cliff Kingsbury do to counter this approach by 
by John Chavis in the LSU defense. Here's Michael through a gap and drives Eric Reed to the 40. It's a gain of eight on the ground. So Sam and Montgomery's that's... off the field right now for LSU, one of their best players. Montgomery's off the field. Benny Logan was off the field. Now he's come back on. If they're off the field, I know what I'm doing. I'm running the football with Michael and Williams and some of these guys. That should be the approach. Even though it's third and eight here, you still have an opportunity to run the football. And they might be in Fort Out territory based on where the ball spotted on the field. Manziel running around in a circle, steps up, looking to run, pushes a teammate out of the way, and it gets drilled at the 41-yard line at the line of scrimmage by Micah Eugene. So it's fourth down and long. Do you punt and pin Absolutely. Deep? Absolutely. Punt this football, put them down inside the 10, maybe inside the 5 if you're lucky, and bring this crowd at Kyle Field back into the game. There's no reason to give any kind of momentum or field position to an offense in LSU that's struggling. And the a and defensive coaches told us yesterday they were concerned with LSU's running backs. But if you're backed up inside your 10 and the defense knows you're going to run the ball, it's a lot easier to stop those 230-pound tailbacks. This one will bounce at the 5, and instead of kicking right, it goes into the end zone for a touchback. LSU will have the ball on the 20. Seeing a lot of speed, a lot of athletes, and some physical play in the trenches here at College Station. A&M has won five in a row, the last two by five points total against Ole Miss and Louisiana Tech. They've got a 9 nothing lead on LSU early second quarter. The Tigers have 54 total yards. They've been hurt by penalties. They'll run the ball here. And pushing the pile is Michael Ford. Stood up after a gain of three or four by the middle linebacker Jonathan Stewart. That's one of the better plays, though, for LSU in the game. Is they're going to go up yep. tempo here? I think you're going to see a little bit of a different approach. We saw on defense for LSU. Now a different approach on offense. Gone is the eye formation. Now a trips shotgun look. And Mettenberger to throw. In trouble. His arm is hit. And rolled incomplete. Demontre Moore, who is an All-America candidate, leads the nation in tackles for a loss among the nation's leader in sacks. Gets there again. Take a look at Montre Moore off the edge again under Rossick. He's had the better of that matchup so far in this game. And I think you see a little bit of the reason why LSU is so conservative on offense and stays in the eye. Because when you go in the gun and spread it out and try to throw the ball, this offensive line can't block these guys. Another third down and long. They've all been third and six or longer. Mettenberger, and that pass way off the mark. They're trying to hit Shepard on the slant. He was double covered. And LSU goes three and out again. Mettenberger is three of nine passing. Boy, and LSU has got to find, he's not happy on the sideline, Les Miles. They've got to find some offense through the air. We thought they might have a great opportunity against an AM defense that last week gave up 450 yards through the air against Louisiana Tech. So far, they haven't found it. La Tech scored 57 points. A huge punt here and backing up. Dustin Harris stood up and dropped at the 25. But the AM defense is much of the story so far in the first half is their offense. 9 0 lead on LSU. And they've almost given up as much yardage through a quarter and five minutes than they do for a usual game. In fact, AM has 84 rushing yards. LSU gives up just 89. Big piece of that being on the field. They've been on the field for twice as many plays as their offense. Hand off here on first and ten to Molina, and not much as Benny Logan comes off a block and makes a play. Texas A&M, number one in the country in scoring, and during this five-game win streak, they're averaging 53 points per game. But a 59 last week, and a win against Louisiana Tech. Manziel on the roll up, being chased by Mingo, and what a play! He got it to Smith! with double coverage and it's a first down in LSU territory. How about that play by the quarterback? Wow, how about this route by Swope, one of the best receivers in the history of Texas A&M, a double move, catch that ball with the safety coming over to knock you out. 
and a great throw oh. from Johnny Manziel. Probably one of those throws that Cliff Kingsbury would say, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Swope lost his helmet, so he has to come out for one play. 27-yard pass play. Ball on the 46 of LSU. Manziel is now thrown for a buck 42. Out on the flat. Malcolm Kennedy grabbed at the ankles and able to drag Jalen Collins for three yards. I think it's important that Texas A&M keeps their foot on the gas pedal right here. Nine points is not going to win you this football game. They've got to continue to keep this tempo and pace and aggressive play calling because LSU is going to start to adjust as they have already. Not going to be easy to continue to move the ball like this. A&M doesn't know anything else, right? <laughs> They play a little conservatively early in the early in the year against Florida. They were a little conservative, and the coach someone said they want to get away from it. On the slot, caught for a first down. Again, McNeil has been a big player so far in this ball game. Collins on the stop. Manziel took the snap, didn't drop back, just fired from his setup, and completed it. 11-yard pickup, another first down for AM. It's interesting, Manziel's looking over the sideline on most every play. Hasn't been doing that to this point in the year. Kingsbury's helping him out with the calls. And quarterback run all the way. Manziel wrapped up after a gain of a couple by LeVar Edwards. We're seeing him and Rasco getting a lot of reps as you look at Kingsbury. It's only his sixth year as a coach. He was a player at Texas Tech. Then uh, played a little bit in the NFL, 33 years of age. He's impressive. He was telling us last night he's learned a lot from some of the coaches he had in the NFL. Guys like Bill Belichick that talked to him about structure. He was with Mike McCarthy with the New Orleans Saints. He's learned nine different offenses and, of course, the air raid with Mike Leach. Big hit in the backfield as Michael is dropped by Deion Jones, a true freshman from New Orleans. LSU finally... It's a negative play on defense, forcing a third down and long. A loss of three on the play, so third down and ten. It's the area of the field where five or six yards are critical just to get in field goal range. Can't take a sack. Manziel gets rid of it, and incomplete. Off target, intended for Wachiku. So it's about a 49-yard field goal try for Taylor Bertolet who made a 54-yarder against Louisiana Tech. He does have the win behind him, so they will try for three points here. Yeah, I think that's a big factor. If this were going the other way on this field, I don't think they attempt a 50-yard field goal, but that win down the field, those flags are flying. I think it's a significant factor. 50-yard try by Taylor Bertolat, a redshirt freshman. Oh, he has plenty of land, and he nails it. Bertolette good from 54 last week, good from 50 today. Him is driven from its territory across midfield on all five possessions. LSU has done it only once and only reached the 49-yard line of AM. Tigers offense with just 58 yards, about three yards per, per play. As that one you know, split the uprights. Brian, your film study of LSU's offense is paying off. You well, know, last week I went back and I looked at the game against South Carolina and I pulled off 18 times that LSU ran this two-man route and they had full max protection. I think Texas A&M has done a great job recognizing that and now is starting to play these routes. You can't be so predictable on offense and expect to get plays. That, that, that play had no chance of working, and that's why I'm saying they need to open up this playbook. Even if they're going to put themselves at risk to win this game, they're going to have to score. So the 10th pass for Mettenberger, and he's going to air it out. Single coverage, and it's broken up by Dustin Harris. Intended for Boone, incomplete. Great play call. First down, play action. Now Boone's got to fight back to this ball. It's not perfectly thrown, but as a receiver, you got to fight back for one or two reasons. One, you can catch that ball. Two, you can get a pass interference call, but that is played very well by Dustin Harris. You said good play call, but are you surprised they're not trying to pound it a little bit more? They haven't been able to. They've got to open up the room to run on the inside, and so far they haven't been able to do it. Another pass play here. 
And this one is caught at the 31 yard line by Boone, short of the first down. Here's Reese. All right, guys, get you up to date. A game going on in the Big 12. Some of Texas A&M's former conference mates, Iowa State, ranked 24th on the road against Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State donning those all orange uniforms. J.W. Walsh, Charlie Moore, that goes 74. 17-10, pokes on top. There's a lot of people, Reese, that were unsure whether A&M could make the transition and play in the SEC. They showed against Florida they could, and they're certainly proving it again today at home against LSU. Third and four. Mettenberger, everybody covered. He's got to throw it away. Now there was a receiver who was dragged down, Jarvis Landry, and a penalty flag comes in. We've seen some late flags. And Landry was dragged down at the 35-yard line by a defender. Yeah, I think it was the Shazer Everett got tangled up and actually tackled him. <laughs> I mean, that's that was a blatant foul on Landry, and uh, this is going to be a first down for LSU. Everett playing corner, normally a safety. He did not play last week because of an arm injury, but he's the biggest of their defensive backs. That's one of the reasons why. Holding number 29 defense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Mark, this was an easy one. I'm surprised it took so long to throw the yeah, play. Mark Shazer wanted his corners to be more physical. Just be a little less physical than that. And he's trying to get a jam on him. It looks like he got caught up and Landry went down. And that actually uh, looks pretty, pretty worse than it is. So first down on the LSU 41. Six and a half to go till halftime. See, they're trying to get Spencer Ware going. Where so far in this ballgame has just two carries, three yards. Now another pass play, and Mettenberger going deep again for Landry. And this time Landry had a shot at it, but could not come down with it in double coverage. Wow. You got to make that play for your quarterback. They got to throw the ball because there's 10 guys up around line of scrimmage. A great route, and this ball now gets on Landry, and you've got to come down with it. I agree with you. Your offense is struggling. Your quarterback needs some help. And it hasn't all been Zach Mettenberger's fault this year, by the way. He's had an offensive line that has had three starters go down to injury or leave the team. And his wide receivers have dropped balls consistently all year. So this is nothing new. Here's Ware on that toss. And he is ripped down at the 45-yard line, but he got four or five. Obioha on the tackle. That's only the ninth run play today. I think that's Dimatre Moore that has tried to get up and get off the field and then went down. He's holding that knee, and that would be a devastating injury for Texas A&M. Lyman in the nation. Now they're holding their breath. Here he is. Take a look. He's fighting off the block, and it looks like he might have got hit low. He was getting tackled there. Should have been a holding call by Nick Jacobs, a tight end. May have been his ankle when he went, finally went down to the ground. Take a look at his left ankle. When he goes down, he gets fallen on right there. Yeah, that's it. That'll do the ankle or the, uh, the knee, but uh, hopefully he can work that out and get back in his game. Well, he's had an impact. Three tackles, a sack, a pass breakup. He leads all defensive linemen in the FBS in tackles. Leads his team in tackles. Now third down and six. Mettenberger only four of 12 passing. Can he throw the ball well enough to convert on third down? Big question coming in this game. And I'm showing blitz. Here they come. Mettenberger in trouble. No chance. Gobbled up by Sean Porter, who is unblocked. And LSU has to punt. AM came with an all out blitz, a la wrecking crew style, and Sean Porter right in between the A gap. Offensive line cannot turn a guy in the A gap loose, and Mettenberg has got to get rid of that football. AM is dictating the pace, tempo, and physicality of this game early. So is that on the O line, or is that on Mettenberger? It's on both of them. I'm not going to point one way or another. You've got to figure that out and handle it. There's two ways to handle it. You can come down or get rid of the football. The combination of the two is what you got to get done. Spoken like a guy whose offensive lineman liked him a lot. Hunt hanging in the air. And fair caught at the 31 yard line. Right? It's a team. Big friend it's with your a team, line. right? Take responsibility. Stout has to throw it away as he was getting pressured by Mingo. 
And he was out of the pocket when he threw the ball, so no penalty flag down. LSU has been rotating defensive linemen to try to keep him fresh. As bad as it's been in the first half for LSU on offense, you know, I think this defense now has found something with this three down front and playing Johnny Manziel and containing him. They're only down two scores in this game. They just need to get to halftime and regroup on offense and come out with a plan. Or force a turnover. Only three interceptions on the year for Manziel. They'll run it here to Molina, and he's spilled at the point of attack by Lamine Barrow. So third down and long coming up. Great play by Barrow, one of the more talented uh, linebackers that LSU has. He just beat the block of the guard and got in the backfield. There's some movement. Montgomery came flying into the backfield. The flag is thrown, but it looks like it's going to be a defensive penalty. They let the play go. Usually, when it's a dead ball fall for false start, they won't let the quarterback yeah. drop and throw. Mingo was offsides as well. Second time in this game. That would make it third and six. That's right in their wheelhouse, third and six. <laughs> Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, replay, third down. And just the penalties for LSU. And they're not, they're, there's never really a good penalty, but no, these are but especially these bad are, penalties. These are killers because right now, Johnny Manziel is a very different quarterback at third and six versus third and 11. His feet now are in play. Five penalties now on the Tigers, third and six for Manziel. And they got to reset the play clock. And I'm trying to get the six and one. LSU is six and one and sixth in the BCS standings. The highest team in the standings that has one loss. Low snap, but Manziel's got it. Throwing up his back foot, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Jalen Collins. There's a flag down as well, as Collins is nailed at the 42 by Evans. Well, we said it was either get to halftime or get a turnover, yep. and it appears they got one. On this flag, it may be on the offense. They were trying to run a pick route against man-to-man -man coverage, and LSU gave him a changeup and had a zone look, and Johnny Manziel didn't read it and threw the ball up for grabs. Pass interference, number 23, offense. The penalty is declined. Result of the plays and interception, first down. That's Sabian Holmes. Yeah, Sabian Holmes is trying to run, run a pick route here for for his wide receiver and they get zone and you just can't go down there and be that blatant. Manziel was expecting him to be downfield more, but as a quarterback, you've got to know the difference between man and zone. That route is not good against a zone look and that's the reason why. So is that a freshman mistake? It's a cliche, yeah, but is it? Absolutely, absolutely, he's only played six games. So you got to live with some of these kinds of plays. He's going to give you the spectacular play and sometimes he's going to make mistakes, but he's going to keep his head up. First, the best starting field position for LSU from the 42. They'll give it to Hill on that power where they pitch it to the tailback, and he doesn't get much. Demontre Moore is back on the field for Texas A&M. Now, tell me why they do that, where they pitch it to the back on a power run. Well, so there are a couple of reasons. They want to get the ball to the back as deep as they possibly can so that he can see better, and he can cut back from anywhere from the left tackle to the right tackle. When he's got that ball deep, he can see that. The other thing is they want that quarterback to hold off on the weak side. Mettenberger, incomplete. He was trying for right, and so now it's third down and 10. And LSU's been in third and long all day long. And they are 0 for 5 on third down. And you're putting it on your quarterback, Mettenberger, who has looked four again throwing the ball. He's 4-13. Well, Demontre Moore is still out there now. He can rush the passer. If I'm LSU, I haven't thrown a screen yet. A very good screen team. Get the ball in your best player's hands. Who's Spencer Ware. Let him try to break some tackles, maybe get a first down. They got Ware and Hill in the backfield with Mettenberger. Here's third and ten. Mettenberger with time going deep. Incomplete. Intended for Landry and a flag. Landry being defended by Tony Hurd. This will be the fifth penalty on AM. And the second one on this drive that results. Pass interference, number four defense, 15 yard penalty, previous spot, automatic first down. Rather, the second one this quarter that results in an LSU first down. Well, they put Tony Hurd on an island in the middle of the field with no help on Landry. 
Uh, the, the right hand is probably why they call this. He has the right hand wrapped around his hip, and the back judge can see that. Yeah, the back judge can see. He doesn't know how, whether he's using that to pull or not, but just the fact that that hand is on the hip alerts that official that it may be a penalty. Farthest advance today for LSU from the 42, Hill. And look at Hill push the pot to the 36-yard line. True freshman who last week against South Carolina rushed for 124 yards and two touchdowns on a career-high 17 attempts. He's a 235-pound tailback. Now is when I would start feeding him. Get this ground game going. They're bunch set. One wide receiver. And they will again. Hill looking for the lane. And again, a good run. Second and five, got three or four. Steven Jenkins on the tackle, so third down and short. Again, LSU still in search of its first third down conversion today. Run it again? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> You're not going to throw it. You've been throwing it. You haven't gotten a first down on third down, so turn around and give that ball to those big backs. Steven Hill still in the game. From here, it would be about a 50-yard field goal. Alamon's long this year is 44. Maybe kicking into the wind. They'll hand it off to the fullback, Copeland, and he gets stacked up short of the first down. And him not fooled. The true freshman, Obioha, coaches said, we're not worried about him. He knows the game. He's got football smarts. And that was a heads-up play by the true freshman from New Orleans. So fourth down, it looks like LSU will go. Well, last week we saw Spencer Ware line up at the quarterback position quite a bit against South Carolina in short yarded situations. I wouldn't be surprised. Yes, that's what they're doing. He's in there right now if he takes this snap. They'll have Ford back there with him. As Ware is under center. And Ware will pitch it, and they get the first down. Inside the 25 is Michael Ford, and pushed out of bounds at the 20. A 13-yard run on fourth down. Well, where last week was the quarterback sneak. This time he's going to fake it and then pitch it out quick to the fastest of the backs. Very well designed. If a and knew we put Ford in the backfield there and knew that he was not a power back, they might have thought that this may be a trick play to get to the edge, and they would have been right. Chase Claymore with a good block from his tight end spot on the far side. So first down, LSU in the red zone. They have struggled mightily on offense this year. Ford getting outside. 15, 10, touchdown! Michael Ford with a 20-yard touchdown run, and LSU is on the board. Ford gets a great block from his wide receiver Jarvis Landry right at the end, which allowed him to get into the end zone. And a nice job of Ford tippy toeing down the sideline. Yes, he's in. So they convert on fourth down. And then on the next play, Ford from 20 yards out. So LSU really committed to the run that drive. And the extra point by Alamo makes it 12 to 7. Texas A&M inside two minutes to go in the half. Keep pounding, keep pounding. That is who LSU is. Get your fullback out on the linebacker. Nice block there. Stewart is not able to catch. Jenkins from the linebacker position didn't make the tackle. And when you give Michael Ford a little bit of a crease, he is going to make you pay. And look at the block by Landry. And he got that penalty. Running that route on third down. Those are the kinds of things that don't show up on the stat sheet. Jarvis Landry played a big part in the success of that last drive for LSU. Now, Brian, this is the first adversity that Johnny Manziel has faced today. As you look at the scoring drive after the Manziel interception, how does he respond? In a moment where, okay, he's made a mistake, LSU is starting to get more pressure on him, and they'll have three timeouts in a minute 49 to work with on offense. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think that Kevin Sumlin, Cliff Kingsbury have any concern about the way that Johnny Manziel is going to react to adversity. He had adversity in the Ole Miss game. They had six turnovers in that game. He threw two interceptions, and they came back, scored two touchdowns late, game-winning touchdown to Ryan Swope on the road in Oxford. And I think he answered a lot of questions about his medal in games like this and that uh, that comeback win. No disrespect to Ole Miss, but they don't have the guys up front that LSU does that are getting after Manziel here of late after they were shut down in the first quarter.
Harrison to kick off. Trey Williams and watch a cure deep for Texas A&M. Kicking into the wing. And here's Williams. Upended short of the 20 yard line. Let's check in with Reese Davis in the studio. Dave, just a little bit away from the Lexus halftime report. Started the day with three undefeated Big East teams. Halftime in our upper left monitor there. Rutgers having trouble with Temple. We'll tell you how that's going and how that might impact the Big East race. Look ahead to South Carolina and Florida and plenty of highlights, including a wild game between Iowa State and Oklahoma State. Dr. Lou and Mayday getting warmed up in the bullpen. We'll see you in a bit. All right, Reese. Still a lot of work to do here. With as fast as AM can move the football. First down inside the 20 yard line. Manzel with all day to throw. And now going deep, incomplete. Crowd wants a flag, but they won't get one. Manzel was hit late. He tried to hit Malcolm Kennedy, who is being defended by the true freshman Jalen Mills. What do you think? Yeah, this is just. I think that's a good no call. That's just Johnny Manziel trying to take a shot down the field. That was a design fade route and Manziel threw it in the middle of the field like a post and Kennedy was just trying to fight his way to try to make a play on the ball. Manziel 14 of 28 passing. He'll throw it again. This one is caught by Swope at the 24 yard line for six yards so third and four coming up Jalen Mills on the tackle Swope last week got his 200th catch second ever to do that at A&M before leaving with a concussion third and four clock nearing a minute to go in the half and Manziel an easy completion to Mike Evans first down at the 30. Wow that was poorly played by Thurl Simon they were in a two deep coverage on the outside he should be rolled up taking away the easy throw from Evans instead way too soft and then he slipped that's what happened he slipped and gave an easy conversion Manziel going deep again for Wachiku and could not pull it in Jalen Collins defending there is a penalty flag back of the line of scrimmage this is the third or fourth time now that Kiki Mingo has been offsides, and every time Manziel throws the ball down the field. Offside, 49 defense, five yard penalty, remains first down. Somebody's, somebody's got, got his frustration somebody, for these guys. Somebody's got to get with Mingo on the sideline, whether it's Les Miles or somebody over there, and say, listen, you don't need to get off the ball so fast. We're not trying to get in the backfield and sack Johnny Manziel. You're giving them too many plays on third down. They're getting first downs. Be smart. The sixth LSU penalty. I don't imagine some of that is frustration because they're having trouble getting to the quarterback. Manziel hanging in the pocket. Now running around in trouble. Here comes Montgomery. Manziel gets away and almost throws an interception. Reed stepped in front of the pass intended for Molina. Oof. And Reed, who bruised his sternum against South Carolina, is hurt again. This is the roller coaster of Johnny Manziel. This decision is the one that Cliff Kingsbury and Kevin Sumlin want to get rid of. He makes great plays, extends plays. It's that throw back across his body with guys in man to man coverage that concerns the coaching staff. So Reed will be out for this play. He's been shaken up off and on this season. He'll run the ball here. Molina gets outside. And there's a flag down. Molina gets the first down. Ball came out at the 40 yard line. Absolutely. He's not ruled down. The ball absolutely came out. Well, it depends also on what the penalty is. If it's a defensive penalty, and LSU recovers, that would be a negate of the takeaway. He was fighting for extra yardage. He got hit, and the ball definitely came out. There's no question about that. It's LSU ball, but let's see what the penalty is. Ronald Martin chopped it out as Molina is fighting for extra yardage on the cutback he's greeted by Martin oh yeah great job great got his hat on the ball tackle. forced the fumble yeah form tackle by Martin putting his on the offense that penalty is declined the result of the play was a fumble recovered by LSU first down it's a huge play Bet two turnovers by AM in the final four minutes of the half and now LSU with a chance to take the lead going into the locker room with the ball at the 41 of the Aggies. Boy, we talked about Kevin Sumlin yesterday about not turning the ball over two already. A nice drive on the touchdown 
as they really hammered the football. Let's see if they keep it on the ground here with Spencer Ware behind his 270 pound fullback in J.C. Copeland. But a pass play. Mettenberger in trouble. And Mettenberger will throw it. And he may have been across the line. It's incomplete. I think he was over the line. That 41 yard line was where the line of scrimmage was. He threw it from the 37. And the rule is it's a penalty only if your entire body is across the line of scrimmage. And it appeared that it was clearly two or three yards past the line. Trying to take an aggressive shot on first down. Eagle forward pass on the offense. The pass was beyond the line of scrimmage. And you got to know where you are in the field. You, you can't make yeah. that mistake. I mean, he's he's trying to make the black line as the line of scrimmage, and he's got to be oh. completely. His entire yeah. body has to be over the line of scrimmage yep. to make that point. And it was clear that uh, that he was good call by the official. And two yards. You, you just can't do that if you're Mettenberger. Again, these penalties by LSU. Are hard to expect the line of scrimmage there when he threw the ball. Well, I don't think that Mettenberger's ever trying to run the ball, so you would think that he, when you get close, he would slow down and try to maximize and give time to his receivers downfield. But it's hard too, knowing where you're on the field and you get knocked around, bumped around out here. So second down and long. It's a loss of down penalty. They sweep forward, and he's at the 35. Stepped. Out of bounds, but after he hugged the sideline and got about two yards away from the first down. So it'll bring up third and short from just past the 32 yard line. But a good half for Michael Ford running the football for LSU. Yeah, last week it was Jeremy Hill downhill, big back pounded. So far in this game, they found most effectiveness with Ford. I like getting him on the edge with speed because they've struggled inside the tackles to run the football. Looking for their first third down conversion. Third and two. And Mettenberger to the air. And he's going to go deep. He threw it out of bounds. <laughs> why the play call? And then second, why do you throw it out of bounds? I mean, you're pounding the football. You're getting to the perimeter against this A&M defense as well. I think they give him a run pass check, to be quite honest with you. They had nine guys up around the line of scrimmage and one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Look at it. They're all nine guys up here. It's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And I think he checks to these plays. Now, if it were me, I would give him a run, and I'd say run it. There is no option. So they're going on fourth down. Now, they got it last time with the Wildcat, with Ware in a quarterback. They're going to leave Mettenberger in here. They threw it on third and two. Let's see what they do here on fourth down. Power look. It's Hill, the true freshman, the tight, or the tailback, and he'll get it, and he got the first down. Inside the 30, clock will stop to reset the ball. LSU still with two timeouts. 22 seconds remaining. Check that one timeout remaining for LSU, and Copeland is shaken up. Copeland got hurt last week. Let's take a look at this week's BCS standings brought to you by Tostitos. We mentioned LSU is the top one loss team in the standings at number six. South Carolina with a big one today against Florida. Of the top ten, who would you say going into the year you said there's no way they'd be in the top ten of the first BCS standings? <laughs> Oregon State? Is, it, I mean, is that the team that you picked? Yeah, I mean, Oregon State certainly has been a great surprise with Mike Riley, Sean Manning, now Cody Vaz. I don't know that people thought that, that Notre Dame was going to be in the top of, of this of these standings, but certainly they have proven with their big wins over Michigan State, Michigan now, Stanford, uh, but the game next week in Oklahoma is really going to judge their season. And it's going to be interesting here. If LSU can win this game, they get a bye week, then they've got Alabama mm -hmm. at home in Baton Rouge in two weeks. And remember, when they won the national championship in 2007, they did it with two losses. And the way the SEC is this year, now, a lot of depends, of course, on Oregon and some of these other teams in the Pac-12 and Notre Dame, but there's a good chance, just based on history, that you're going to have a one-loss team in the national title game. 22 seconds remaining. First down, Mettenberger flanked by Ware. And Mettenberger airing it out, overshot Landry again. 
And Mettenberger, 4 of 15 passing now. Second and 10, 17 seconds left. They have a timeout. That was a great opportunity. You had one of your best receivers in Landry matched up on a safety and man to man coverage, and Landry just couldn't separate. You got to create separation to make play. Mettenberger hanging in the pocket, going deep again, and a diving attempt. It's caught. Boom with the touchdown. And LSU leads. Seconds left in the half. And a 29-yard strike. Mettenberger lobbing it out there for Boone, who gets his fourth touchdown grab. Great play call attacking the end zone under 30 seconds left in the half. One guy had an opportunity, Landry, on one side of the field against man-to-man. -man. Then you give Boone an opportunity, and he does create the separation and makes a great play. Point after makes it 14-12. Two turnovers by AM directly resulting in touchdowns for the Tigers. Watch the double move. It's a slant and go. Trying to beat the safety. This ball is thrown perfectly from Zach Mettenberger. Lay out, make a play for your quarterback, put your team up just before halftime. Safety's got to be able to get over. When you want a double move like that, the safety Matthews has got to get over and make that play, but a perfectly thrown ball. So, Brian, what's your message to your team if you're Kevin Sumlin? You dominated most of the first half. You were rolling on offense. Your defense was playing well, but you trail. Protect the football. We know that we can move the ball. That's what we found out against this vaunted LSU defense. We can move the ball on offense. We don't need to panic. Just play our game, but protect the football, and we'll be fine. Well, that's going to feel good for Mettenberger, too. Struggling in this game, struggling this year. It's his first touchdown pass in SEC competition, his fourth game. And maybe that'll help him <laughs> regain some of that confidence that has been lost. That's a big monkey off the back. You know, I know as a quarterback, when you get that touchdown pass, that first one against good competition, that's a big monkey off your back. And certainly, Les Miles and, and LSU and all the faithful are hoping that that leads to a little bit more confidence for Zach Mettenberger. We talked with Greg Stradrar, the offensive coordinator, last night, and I asked him about his confidence of his quarterback. He said he's never seen it better. I tended to disagree. Yeah. I don't think he had that kind of confidence, but that TD will help. You and I had a hard time believing that one. Squid kick fielded by Hicks. He'll take a knee, so the offense will come on the field at the 29-yard line with eight seconds left. We'll see if the Aggies take a knee or if they try to run a play here. Johnny Manziel is thrown for 169 yards, but an interception. He's only rushed for 23 yards on 10 attempts. And LSU's defense did a pretty good job against him here in the first. And this turnover is huge by AM. And Zell takes an knee, and that's the end of the first half, which LSU leads after the two turnovers in the final five minutes by Texas A&M. Les Miles standing by with Jen. Hey. Question is now, how will A&M adjust to this different look? Against Florida, Florida defensively made the adjustments at halftime and really stymied Johnny Manziel in the second half. LSU made them after the first quarter, and now A&M's had an opportunity to go in at halftime and make some adjustments. Bertolette will kick off. Michael Ford, who had that touchdown run that you saw, is deep along with Landry. Kick off into the wind, but it's deep. And it will come out of the 25 for LSU as we check in with Jen. <laughs> Certainly windy down here. Well, if you guys remember that Coach Sumlin told us yesterday that Johnny Manziel has a tendency to get down on himself if he makes a mistake. So I asked him what he said to him in the half. He said, look, just settle down. This is a real football game. LSU is very proud. We need to go out there, just complete drives, but really just settle down. And that's what we talked about in the first half, the adversity. How will he handle it? And there was a fumble on an extra effort attempt by Molina that led to that second LSU touchdown. We'll have to wait to see Manziel, though. It's Mettenberger coming off a confidence-building touchdown pass. Throwing on first down at Beckham, who can't get away from the defender. A gain of only one. Dustin Harris brings him down. Let's look at our first-half stats. Again, in the first quarter, all AM. Second quarter, relatively even, but the turnovers costly. And LSU still without a third-down conversion, yet the lead. <laughs> They're very fortunate. 
They pitch it to Ware. Trying to get the angle on the outside, and he's dumped by Howard Matthews. So third down coming up. And him trying to get momentum back with a three and out on defense to get it into the hands of Manziel. This is a big first possession for Texas A&M's defense, though. They gave up two late scores in the first half. I'm sure they got a talking to at halftime from their head coach, Kevin Sumlin, but a big third and eight coming up. You wonder, Devontre Moore, is he 100%? We saw him get shaken up earlier, and LSU has been able to move the ball a little bit more since he got hurt. There he is. Third and eight is his down. They block him with three guys, and Mettenberger at a time. Now the pocket breaks down. Mettenberger gets rid of it to Hill. And Hill spilled shy of the first down. He almost got it. Devontre Moore on the tackle downfield. It's fourth down. LSU will kick it. Great effort by Moore. You said it. He got blocked by three guys, but he did not give up on the play. He kept coming. Durasic had him first, then Collins. Mettenberger does a nice job extending this play, but watch the effort by Moore to run down the back. He got that tackle. And that's been the difference that Kevin Summer has told us about Demontre Moore. Last year he was a pass rusher. This year he is a complete player. Brad Wing punting. Harris is dangerous. Three career punt returns for touchdowns. And he gets knocked down from behind at the 26 yard line by Deion Jones. Time now for our Aflac trivia question. An SE team has been ranked first in 11 consecutive BCS standings. What was the last non-SEC team ranked number one? Well, you say 11 standings. That's going to take you all the way back because it's only half the year. That's going to take you all the way back, you figure, to 2010 in the middle part of the year. And oh, Oregon was pretty good back then. Not USC because they were on probation yeah, and eligible. Probation, yeah. That's a good question. So you don't have a guess. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Manziel setting up the screen and Barrow all over it. He drops Kristen Michael after a gain of one. Hey, man, I'm just trying to keep up with this fast-paced A&M <laughs> offense. Now you're throwing questions at me. I'm trying to think back in history. I'll go to Oregon. How about that? What do you got? Well, I said that to our crew, and oh, they kind of shook their head. They didn't tell me the answer, but you're set, I didn't yeah, get the sense see. unless they're lying to me, <laughs> which is possible. I'll be the GOAT. Okay. <laughs> Second and nine. Manziel flushed out, but hard to get away from those LSU speed ends. Mingo was there first, and then Logan, the defensive tackle, chases him out. Loss on the play. Manziel probably should have just thrown that as he got to the sideline. <laughs> Boy, take a look at Kiki Mingo here. He's got a bead on him. He's playing it perfectly, not rushing. I'm just keeping my outside shoulder free. There he goes. Now can I catch him? Oh. I tried to tell you guys, this guy's pretty fast. Yeah. Should have thrown it though, now you're third and 13, still third and nine. He has not been able to scramble today against LSU. Mansell in trouble, being chased. And running around in the backfield trying to make a play. Makes a man miss at the 25, at the 30. And Johnny Football got the first down. That's what the Kyle Field faithful have come to love about the redshirt freshman. Of all the great runs he's had this year, this one might be the best. He was dead to rights three times. Not only that, it wasn't a defensive tackle at him. It was Micah Eugene, the corner. He couldn't catch him. Michael on the carry, banged down at the 40-yard line by Minter and Rasco. Well, Manziel is an interesting player because he's not big, about six feet tall, maybe 200 pounds. That's what he's listed at. He was an originally committed to Oregon. And imagine that. They were using two quarterbacks on plays against Arizona State. What if they had Manziel? <laughs> maybe three. <laughs> put him in receiver, put him in running back. Here's Michael again trying to pick a hole. Nice patience in cutback. Got to the 44 for four yards, third well, down and short. Cliff Kingsbury was telling us yesterday he thinks he's the best player on the field no matter what the position. He thinks he could go play the receiver position and do that, play quarterback, whatever you ask him to do, running back. He's just that confident. And when you have that kind of confidence, you don't want to give up on any play. And on that last conversion, you see what? Third and three. Manziel. Breaks a tackle, being chased by Montgomery, and they have contained there. Lawson was going to make sure he did not get outside of him. Lawson made the play 
fourth down and a punt coming. Take a look at how Minter, the middle linebacker, number 46, he stays, keeps his reads, then gets out. Bavar Edwards gets out there. That's just good team defense. They're not attacking right now, LSU. They are reacting, and I think it's working for him. If you attack Johnny Manziel, he's going to crease you and hurt you. If you react to him, you've got a chance to rally to the football and get him on the ground. AM leads the nation in net punting. They haven't punted a whole lot. Only 21 times coming into today. Epperson gets it away. And Beckham, the deep man. And that hit a Texas AM player around the 24 yard line. So that's where the Aggies will have the ball. 14 12, early third, LSU on top. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Oh, they tried to throw us off. I couldn't think of anybody else. Hey, at least you took a shot at it. Yeah. We'll hear about that after the game. Kenny Hilliard is in the game at tailback. They rotate four guys. Mettenberger to throw on first down. And going deep, taking another shot. And again, it's overthrown. This one intended for Beckham. We've seen several overthrows by Mettenberger, who's now 7 of 19 passing. I understand why taking some shots at the end of the first half to try to get a touchdown before you go in. But when you come out in the second half now, you've got to start establishing who you are and what you do. Talked all week about getting back to who you are as an offensive line and as an offense, and that's running the football. And on first down, you throw a ball down field. It's a very low percentage play. Battenberger throwing in second down and going deep again and overthrown again, intended for Shepard. So no one's third and ten, and he's forced to throw again. Well, I, I, I got to be honest. I haven't seen. I, I don't think I've ever seen two of the same play calls back to back, trying to throw the ball down the field like that. They must see something they like against a specific corner. But Dustin Harris is playing well on the outside, and Mettenberger has not proven that he can throw the ball accurately down the field. Well, maybe they're trying to get him going. They feel like okay, he's got yeah, some of that confidence that's back. Not, that's not how you get a quarterback going. You don't get a quarterback going by try, attempting the most difficult pass there is. And right now, he's not been very accurate. 0 for 8 on third down. Third and 10. Another pass play. That murder. Crap! And able to get away from Moore. No whistle. And then he throws it away. Moore, who is seeking his second sack of the day, has been hobbled, but fighting through it. Almost got Mettenberger, but a three and out nonetheless. Well, Moore was nicked up a week ago in the La Tech game, played over 100 snaps in that game. They were worried about his conditioning and about his legs, but he has come out and played well so far. Couldn't get him on the ground there. That was a good effort by Mettenberger, at least saving 10, 12 yards. Brad Wayne, who struggled punting the ball last week, has had a great day. He booms this one. Harris along the sideline fields it and steps out at the 21-yard line. Back to Molina, but you see the chop block right there at the 25-yard line, so it comes back. And then Manziel with an interception. LSU got a touchdown there. And then Molina fumbles towards the end of the half. And with 11 seconds left, LSU takes the lead for the first time. 14-12, the Tigers on top. A game certainly with SEC championship implications. And for LSU, national title implications. They're the highest one-loss team in the BCS standings at number six. They still play Alabama at home. After a bye week, they've got Mississippi State at home. Should be a huge road win if they can get it. But Johnny Manziel has a lot of time. And he completes it here to McNeil, who dies forward for a couple on the play. Knocked down by Kevin Minter. Question is, can Texas A&M find the answer to the adjustments that LSU has made? After the first touchdown drive and, and field goal drive, the last six drives, they've forced two, field two turnovers, and uh, they haven't given up any points. So it's, uh, it's been an adjustment that, that has worked for LSU on defense. Starting safety, Craig Lawson shaken up. While we have a moment, let's head to the studio and check in with Reese Davis. All right, Dave, Sports Center right now presented by Discover Card. Rutgers has established control. They were down 10 0 to Temple. Gary Nova to Juwan Jamison. This kid has been spectacular. Workhorse, they give it to him, and ball never gets heavy. Runs it in for a touchdown. Nova has thrown three touchdown passes. This one to Mark Harrison, and now the Scarlet Knights appear to be on their way to remaining undefeated, up 21 10 on the Owls now in the third. 
Well, the Big East has taken a lot of heat, but you got Rutgers and Louisville unbeaten as Lawson has helped off the field. Syracuse last night with a big win at home against uh, Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> Says the Syracuse alum. And they coach people. Paul <laughs> Pasqualoni's uh, return to Syracuse. <clears throat> Cincinnati is uh, having a good year, undefeated. And the Big East looking good so far. And there's some big games in November in that league. Yeah, absolutely. I think the team to beat there is Louisville. You know, with the quarterback and Teddy Bridgewater. And uh, the defense under Charlie Strong, I think I think they're the one to beat in that in that Big East. Yeah, when that Arkansas job comes open, I think Charlie Strong has got to be a candidate. He's been in the SEC, he knows the SEC, and he's done a great job in his first head coaching job at Louisville. They were down there when Crackthorpe had the job, currently an assistant here with LSU. And after Petrino had so much success there before leaving for the NFL for half a season, second and seven. Manziel dumps it off to Mike Evans and trying to fight his way forward. Barrow and Simon team up on the tackle, so third down coming up. Evans has been productive today, 64 receiving yards on five catches. Third and two. They love Ryan Swope in this scenario. He's lined up right here in the slot. Looks like he's got man-to-man -man coverage as well. Four catches for Swope on the day. And they'll hand it off. LSU not expecting that. The straight handoff to Molina, who fumbled in the first half. And a big play here with about 16 yards to the 45. Lamine Barrow was trying to come on the blitz, and he just looped over the top of the center, which opened up a huge hole for Michael. They fake it this time. Manziel going to the sideline. What a throw. Evans with a great catch, got his foot down. But how about Manziel with another accurate toss? The basketball player Evans, six foot five, goes up and gets this ball. And great body awareness. Come down inbounds. Caught it with one hand. And then a run play by Molina on first down. Doesn't get much. Maybe a yard. AM in LSU territory, trailing by two. Uh, Evans with 42 catches on the year. Certainly making a case for all SEC. We talk about Manziel, but Evans is over 600 yards receiving halfway through the season. He's a wretched freshman like Manziel. Second and nine. Manziel will throw and a bullet that Evans couldn't catch it. It picked off. Intercepted by Minter. It was thrown perfectly. Well, it hit the hip of Evans or what, but it went high in the air and intercepted the third turnover by Texas A&M since the five-minute mark of the second quarter. Dave, this is the same play Evans caught earlier in the game and made a nice play and conversion. Just took his eye off the ball. And you want to talk about adversity. A&M now three turnovers in this game. This is just focus. Seeing the ball into your hands, not worried about getting hit in the middle of the field, but sometimes young receivers, as good as he is, inexperience sometimes leads to these mistakes. And an opportunity now for LSU with the ball at its 40-yard line to continue to pound the football, and they've got Ware in as the Wildcat quarterback. Horrible snap, but Ware scoops and gets positive yardage to the 45, a five-yard pickup. Well, the way LSU's defense has stepped up, if they can get a touchdown, that's really going to put pressure on Manziel and company. Well, and, and Manziel's got to keep his head up. He's got to go up and down the line of scrimmage, up and down the sideline there and say, listen, we're okay. Bennett, they've been in this situation before, unfortunately, with the old Miss game turned over six times and coming back and winning. I don't think they're going to lose confidence. They just need to have better focus, all 11 guys on offense, to not turn the ball over. Where again, the quarterback. And where? Tracked down by maybe the only guy for a that can get him. Demontre Moore, it's a loss in the play. They had Mettenberger lined up in receiver, and it looked like where fake the pass and then took off. So the play there was made as well by Jonathan Mathis, number 92, getting up the field, which forced Ware to cut back prematurely, and then the pursuit by Demontre Moore on the weak side got him. Demontre Moore last year played that joker position in the 3-4, Von Miller's position at AM. He's transitioned to a down lineman in this new defense, and he's been terrific, one of the best defensive linemen in the country. Third and seven. Mettenberger throws complete. 
first down catch made by James Wright in the a &M territory for a nine-yard game. Boy, that's too easy. When you have a quarterback that's struggling throwing the ball, you want to challenge DeShazer Everett way off of, left, of a right to wide receiver. A nice throw and a good catch, but a has got to challenge LSU receivers on the outside. They've already shown that they can cover them down the field. There's no reason to be worried about coming up and playing them in press coverage. That's their first third down conversion. They did convert on fourth down twice in the second quarter. Hill straight ahead. Bounces up tacklers and finally spun down at the 40. Eight yard gain. LSU starting to lean on AM now. Well, we saw it last week against South Carolina, starting to get this power running game going in the second half. And Jeremy Hill is the one they like to use. Second and short. There's that power with the pitch. And Hill has the first down. Steven Jenkins, who missed last week's game due to suspension, gets the first. Uh, gets the tackle. Big reason why that power running game was so successful for Les Miles a week ago was their efficiency on first down. They were getting big chunks on the ground on first down, so they didn't have to worry about third and long situations. They just converted on second down and third down and short. If they're going to be able to establish that run game, I think that's a key for them. They've tried to throw the ball so much in this game where they've been behind. They've had 24 run plays and 22 pass plays. Mettenberger is 8 of 22, 83 yards, but he does have a touchdown his first in SEC competition. They go out of the eye again, and Mettenberger will pitch it. Hill running downhill inside the 35 for about four yards. Actually, it's Hilliard on the carry. So second and six coming up, but four yards on first down. Yeah, that's a good run. Four yards is a good run on first down because you can come back, get another four, and then you're in a third and two situation, which LSU feels really good about converting on a downhill run. And this Kyle Field crowd, which was roaring in the press box swing in the first half, has been much more quiet here in the third quarter. Offset eye here with Hilliard, the back, Mettenberger pointing with his left hand to the right, and that's where the play is run, and Hilliard wrapped up after minimal game. Now, can't the defense see that, Brian, when the quarterback with his left hand points behind him to his right? Isn't that an indicator for right. defense? He's not necessarily pointing where that ball is going to go. He's pointing, or he's alerting the, the backs behind him as to what his check was. Could have been a run-pass check, and he just gives him a number behind his back to say one or two, one pass, two run. So he's communicating to the backs behind him because a lot of times they can't hear him in a loud venue. Third and six, and he'll keep it on the ground with Hill. And maybe LSU thinking four downs here. Hilliard dropped after a gain of a yard. So fourth down and five. How do you handle this? It's about a 50-yard field goal. Alleman's uh, long this year is 44, so it would appear to be out of his range, but we'll see what LSU does. There is wind. Actually, they're going to bring... Uh, they're going to try to field goal. Yeah. yeah. Trying to try field goal. They do have wear on the field. Be wear of a fake. We have not seen the Hatter have any trick well, plays. Now they have yeah. an illegal substitution. Going to push him back five yards. I don't know what they attempt this. Well, I don't know if Spencer Ware is normal. Substitution infraction. Number 44 offense. Five yard penalty. Remains four thousand. Spencer Ware is normally the wing on the field goal team. Maybe that was the mix-up that he's normally not in, and they're running a trick play, so they put Ware in, and you saw another guy then run out of the huddle. Well, you're trying to anticipate a trick from I the hat. That's just what you're trying it. to do. You're trying just to look up it. the sleeves. Oh, now you're, you're at 55 yards here. All right, we're on alert. That's fourth and ten. <laughs> Alamar on fourth and ten. Has the wind that is bad. This has the leg, but it is wide to the right. So it'll be great field position for AM after the missed 54 yard field goal try. It remains 14 12 LSU. In the yard line, Manzel. And a struggled of late, two interceptions since the end of the second quarter. Three turnovers, although the last interception not really his not fault. his fault. It was on Mike Evans, the receiver. Manziel with a quick throw to Swope. 
And he's out near the 42 for a handful. Minter on the stop. And Swope, a little slow to get up. He took a, a, a weird hit. He was going down, and then he got hit on his back, and it looked like his legs flipped up. He needs to come out and catch his breath, take an assessment of all the body parts. See if they're still there. What a terrific player, though. Last year, over 1,200 receiving yards. 89 catches from Ryan Tannehill. Second and five. Here's Michael. And good job on the outside. Got some excellent blocks out there. Lost and he's back in the game. Made the tackle, but it's an a and first down. You said it. They get the edge with Michael, and he's got the speed to get to the outside and right back over the football. And Michael again. Dragged down from behind. Micah Eugene and Chansey Agayeri from behind on the tackle. Micah Eugene has played this entire game pretty much since the start of the second quarter. He's been the adjustment. They take out that defense alignment, and Micah Eugene is the one that comes in to make plays on Johnny Manziel. They feel like he has the speed and the awareness to react to the speed of Manziel. He was showing blitz there. And here he comes. Manziel throws with coverage on Swope incomplete. Let's check in with Reese. All right, guys, let me get you up to date on what's going on with Ohio State and Purdue. Caleb Turbush down 14-13. Now to Gary Bush. He's going to go in to score. Purdue has a 20-14 lead, but the news is that Braxton Miller knocked out of his game, carried out on a cart. Get you up to date when we find out something. Oh, wow. Uh, that is Ohio State's best player, one of the best players in the country. Third and nine for a and Manziel with time and over through Swope. It's fourth and nine. Seventh time Texas A&M has been in Tiger territory. Only 12 points to show for it. And they will punt and try to pin LSU deep, but they'll be punting into the wind here. Johnny Manziel looks like he was expecting something else from Ryan Swope. Last two, last two passes he was targeting Swope, and Swope took a big hit on first down and didn't look to have the kind of speed or separation he normally does. Good kick by Epperson. It hung in the air and no fair catch signal. And an immediate tackle at the 11-yard line. Beckham is saying he called for a fair catch, but there's no penalty flag. Unless he called for it. If you call for it, you can't catch it and then run, or it's an offensive penalty. The officials are talking about it. It's hard to tell whether he signaled for it or if he was just trying to shade himself from the sun. You have got to get the, head, the hand above the head and wave it back and forth for it to be a, a fair catch signal, and I would not qualify that as a fair catch no, signal. No, he threw the flag. He threw the flag, so that's big. That's going to back LSU up inside the 10. Had a delay of game. On the receiving team, the catch receiver gave a signal and then attempted to run. Five-yard penalty, first down, timeout. Again, a, a foolish penalty by number one in the BCS standings. Plays tonight against Tennessee on ESPN at 7. We've got the number six team in the BCS standings, LSU, on the road, leading the number 18 team, Texas A&M by two. But the Tigers, for the second time today, starting a drive at their six-yard line. After the delay of game penalty. And they run it straight ahead and out to the eight yard line is Michael Ford. I want to mention this story only because it's in the news again. That'd be Tyron Matthews kicked off the team in August. There was a Sports Illustrated report this week saying that, uh, saying he allowed his image to be used in promo videos for a club and he also may have received benefits and that it's possible that other players on LSU were involved. First things first, Matthew denied that report. And then also Les Miles telling us yesterday they're comfortable that none of the other players were involved, or at least a player that might have been involved, Anthony Johnson, said that he never authorized usage of it and that he told them to stop. Because if you're aware of that going on and you don't do anything about it, then your eligibility is in question. But this has raised eligibility questions for Matthew for next season as a Trey Turner, the right guard, is down. And Matthew also has the opportunity to go to the NFL. Don't know where he'd get drafted. Probably not a first-round pick. Yeah, Me bad situation. Bad situation. And uh, 
Well, I think the other thing, too, Brian, about the article that the writers were trying to state is where Matthew is now, that he's yeah. come a long way, right. meeting with John Lucas, that he's taking care of himself, taking care of himself mentally and physically. As Trey Turner's down, they're already missing their starting right guard, Josh Williford, who's yeah. out with a concussion. Now Turner is down, so this we'll is, see who comes this is in. big. This is big because Josh Williford being out, not even making the trip. You've got Trey Turner. He's right here. And I'm, it's a, oh, so right there. Sorry. Something, something happened. Something looks like something got. I don't know what happened to him, but now Elliot Porter, number 55, who is a sophomore, will come in, who hasn't played at all this year. And hopefully Trey Turner's okay. Yeah, Porter started a game against Idaho at center. He's playing guard right now. Second and six, final minute of the third quarter. He'll keep it on the ground with Ford, and he's grabbed from behind. A gain of one. Howard Matthews, the safety down there, making the play. It brings up third down. That's the ninth guy up in the box. Howard Matthews, he's a safety. Take a look. He's right here. He's just going to come around and beat the block. He can't account for that guy. And everybody says, why is LSU throwing the ball so much? Why don't they just run it, run it, run it? That's why. you got a ninth guy up there. You don't have nine guys to block. And if you don't do that, if you don't throw the ball and get those safeties back, that's what's going to happen. LSU has to snap the ball. See the difference in the game and play clocks. And on third down, it's almost intercepted. That's Stewart not giving it away. That's a great play by Stewart. They tried to run a double move with the tight end. Jacob. The home of the 12th man, College Station. Kyle Field with Aaron down two, ready to get the ball back. Wing punting into the wind, and it checks up. And AM will start in LSU territory at the 49. Here's Jim Brown. Thanks, Dave. Well, after that last offensive series, A&M's Ryan Swope came up to the sideline. He was complaining about his cleats. He got the equipment managers to bring over two new pairs. He's definitely switched those out. Now, David Beatty, the wide receiver coach, got in the face of his receivers. He said, who is going to make a play? Who's going to do it? Because if we lose this game, it is on us. Really trying to challenge him here. Well, certainly Manziel needs some help. He's made some plays. He's also made some mistakes. He had a drop by Evans, which was deflected and picked off. Well, Cliff Kingsbury wanted to find out how good the third and fourth corners for LSU were. Could they cover our guys in man-to-man -man coverage? And I think he's finding out that those reserves at LSU are pretty good, too. No touchdowns for Johnny Manziel today. And a throw here and a dangerous pass that pulled him by Swope. How did Manziel complete that to the 35 for 13 yards? Wow. How did Manziel complete it? And how did Ryan Swope catch it? Oh, that is great concentration by Swope. The best hands on the team by far and makes a play after had no, didn't need new shoes to catch that ball. Yeah. As Jen said it though, is somebody had to step up and Swope made a play right there. And now here's Swope again, gets a block down field and pushed out at the 30 yard line for about five yards by Jalen Mills. Uh, Johnny Manziel, who has broken the single-game SEC record for total offense twice against Arkansas and Louisiana Tech, broke his own record. What will they do here on third down and five at the 30-yard line? Now, uh, second down and five, excuse me. Manziel is thrown for over 200. Only run for 32. He'll take off here, but nowhere to go. Good discipline by those defensive linemen for LSU. That was Anthony Johnson who brings him down for a loss. Four guys, look at the left side of your screen. Four guys waiting on Johnny Manziel. He is not going to take anybody by surprise in this second half. If they're going to win, it's probably going to be him throwing the football and swoping these wide receivers getting open and making plays. And yeah, that pushes him nearly out of field goal range. Their kicker has the leg. He's got a 54-yarder and a 50-yarder this season. Here's third and nine out of an empty set. Pressure coming. And the pass away low and incomplete intended for Molina. Let's see if they bring on Bertolette to try the long field goal. They will. Kicked a 50-yarder earlier today. And again, a 54-yarder last week. And this would be about 52 from here. And he does have the wind at his back. 
Do you agree with this decision here to try the long field? Goal? I, I think so. I mean, you're down two, obviously. This will put you up one, and he made this length field goal by a long shot earlier in the game, so he's got the confidence with the win that he can make it. This one is no good, wide to the right. And so that'll give LSU good field position. That's a big missed opportunity. They got the ball on LSU's side of the field after getting that stop. He had plenty of leg. Just a little while. And Purdue, now first of all, this is the play on which Braxton Miller was hurt. Had a big gainer and was slammed down on his back. Now they're bringing a stretcher to the locker room right now. They're going to take him to the hospital. Purdue has added a safety to its lead. They're up 22-14. It's on ABC. Elliott Sadler, four nationwide series wins this season. That's a career high. The race is going to come up after football. If you're looking for NASCAR countdown, it's starting over on ESPN News right now. Right, Reese, that would be a huge loss for Ohio State with Braxton Miller if it's serious. And they're going to make sure by taking him to the hospital to see. LSU keeping it on the ground with Hill. And he found the lane, got to the 41 for about seven yards. Johnny Manziel was shaken up on this play, and I don't know if it was on the hit or watch what his, took place watch, after. Watch his left shoulder here. He gets driven into the ground, and then when you play quarterback in the SEC, you're going to get a little business. <laughs> Sit down on top of you. That's Anthony Johnson, 300-pound defensive tackle. Hill close to the first down. Chasing Manziel all over the field, these defensive line. When they finally get him on the ground, they want to give him a little extra business. Well, when a 300-pound guy sits on a 190-pound guy, you feel it. He used to be from experience. Yeah. It's not a good place to be. So he's short. Big third down for the AM defense. They've had six three and outs. Let's see if LSU just pounds it here. They got their 272-pound fullback, Copeland, to block for a 235-pound tailback. And they run behind the fullback, and Hill has the first down to the 48-yard line. Yeah, and that, that's just the, the kind of power that we saw last week in the South Carolina game. a and had as many guys up in the box as they possibly could. They had nine guys up, and you just push them back, and you get a big first down. Ford comes into the game as LSU keeps those backs fresh. We have not seen a lot of Spencer Ware. Only six carries today. He was the guy AM was worried about the most at that running back position. And a quick pitch. And a good spin by Ford. Jenkins eventually brings him down at the 45, but they're starting to get six, seven yards on the ground on first down. You don't see that real option game, not that it's an option with Zach Mettenberger, but you see that play once or twice a game from this LSU offense, and they're just trying to give a little bit of Michael Ford, some space to get the speed on the edge. Ford. And another LSU first down. They have run the ball 12 of the last 13 plays. And you start to lean on that lighter defense, and you also take time off the clock and stop there for a moment to reset the ball first down. Yeah, once you get into the fourth quarter with a less miles coach team and this kind of defense on the road, with the lead, and they're going to run this ball. There's going to be no more trying to throw the ball down the field. This is milking the clock, wearing down the defense, and protecting your own. Ford on the sweep. And again, good yardage, close to five yards. How do you counter that if you're AM knowing LSU is going to run the ball well, here? AM has done a fantastic job in this game. They've held LSU to 14 points, and one you know, was a touchdown throw before the half, and one was a big run. Outside of that, AM's played terrific defense, better, much better than they did a week ago, giving up 57 points to Louisiana Tech. Second and six. Hill, left side, and he's got the first down and more. Dumped at the 27, but it's a nine-yard gain. Everett made the tackle. That's now 13 of the last 14 plays that have been run. You ask me how, they bring the safety down. There he is, Howard Matthew, 31. That's how you stop the run on the weak side. He's unblocked. It's his responsibility to get the back on the ground. He misses the tackle, and another first down. Hill again, big hole inside the 20. Hill inside the 10. First and goal, LSU at the nine. 
This looks eerily similar to the South Carolina game. Watch Jonathan Stewart, number 11. Not great effort from the uh, defense and the linebacking crew on that last play. And if you don't have supreme effort and you get gassed, you're going to get run on. They go hurry up and throw it out on the flat. And unable to get away from a defender is Landry. He loses yardage. So they come back after they pounded the ball. They throw it going no huddle and they lose three yards. That's what drives LSU fans crazy. <laughs> it's maddening. You run the ball with a big back and then you throw a screen and you just you just want them to run the ball. Do what you do. Be true to who you are. And that's the recipe. Even though it's not sexy, that's the recipe for LSU. If LSU gets a touchdown, that missed extra point by a and could come back to haunt them. Missed the PAT on the opening drive touchdown. They spread it out here, so no running back. And there was some movement. It looked like the timeout, though, was called first before LSU's whole line moved. So two timeouts remaining for Texas A&M. Second and goal from the 12 coming up. They, they run the ball and get down here, and because they haven't had success, they throw it on first down, but still it's, Wildcat, yeah, right. now it's Wildcat, which you would think would be a run with Spencer Ware at quarterback. Ware is back there with four. And it's four. Trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage. So now third and goal from just inside the 10. Sean Porter on the tackle. Mettenberger was lined up wide to the left. And you're up two. passing situation here. You're up two. You've got a field goal which would put you up five, which would require a touchdown. I expect a conservative call from Les Miles. Run the ball again. Really? Or a safe throw. And maybe a break a tackle to get in the well, end zone. They're putting Mettenberger wide to the left. I expect a run from Spencer Ware. He has thrown the ball once this year. He's 0 for 1. Third and goal on the 10. Ware trying to get outside. He can't. I just don't agree with that call. How can you not take a shot to the end zone? And get a, you get a touchdown and make it a nine-point game. They're not coming back. But There's, now it's going to be a five-point game after the field goal, and AM can win with a touchdown. Let me say this. You haven't had any success throwing the ball, not only today, but all year. So why would you attempt the ball into the end zone, potentially get it tipped or picked in an interception, and then you're still up two and a field goal beats you? I think that's the right call there. Come out here, go up five, and make them score a touchdown on your defense. That's Les Miles having confidence in his defense. What does it say about his confidence in his quarterback? Well, we knew that. 28-yard field goal try. And it just sneaks past the right upright for Allen. So it is 17 to 12. LSU on top. First down play really hurt him. They went backwards three yards. And then they ran two consecutive Wildcat plays. The field goal for LSU makes it a five-point game. Eight and 12. LSU just tacked down a field goal. 11-play drive. The only pass lost yardage as LSU now in the red zone. Three of 13 with touchdowns against conference foes. They played it conservatively on second and third down with Ware running the Wildcat and settled for three. Now a kickoff into the win. Returnable for Trey Williams on the eight-yard line. And Williams is loose. Past the 40. Sheds a defender. Williams being chased. At the 25, he cut it back and brought down inside the 20. True freshman Trey Williams with a huge play for the Aggies. Trey Williams is a very highly recruited athlete out of the state of Texas here. He's got speed to burn. One move on the, on the safety. And a touchdown saving tackle from Jalen Collins. A 76-yard return. As momentum shifts in the favor of AM after that stop on third down. And now a first down in the red zone looking to take the lead with 8.22 remaining. Johnny Manziel in an empty set. He's thrown for 212 and rushed for only 28. LSD has done a pretty good job against him. And he's calling for a reset of the play clock, and they will give it to him here. As a penalty flag down, but I think the officials will confer and say we didn't reset the play clock. We should have, and it won't be delay. Let's go back to that fourth down play, though. They elect to be conservative and settle for three instead of taking a shot into the end zone. Might that cost him here? 
with AM in business at the 16 yard line. Manziel takes off and only gets to the 13 yard line before he's brought down by Benny Logan. He was running circles around those tackles in the first half, but they've found a way to keep Manziel in check here since the uh, midway point of the second quarter. Well, LSU was, was using almost exclusively a three down lineman front in the second and third quarters. Here they have four down linemen. And it was difficult to find a lane in the middle for Manziel. Man to man coverage on the outside. Expect these linebackers to come. And they do. Manziel in trouble. Being chased. And he throws it left handed. And it's almost intercepted by Eric Reed. He threw it with his off hand as Minter had pressure and almost turned it over. <laughs> Yeah, we see it coming up here. You've got to see it as a quarterback. You've got to anticipate this. Tremendous athlete. I mean, most quarterbacks, 99.9% .9 would not be able to get out of that, but oh. this is a, this is the kind of player he is. He's the player that will make things happen, but also sometimes he will make mistakes, and that was almost a very costly one. Let's see what kind of a play they run here on third down and eight. Are you at worst going to make sure you get three? Because there's seven and a half left. Or are you going for the touchdown? He's going for the touchdown, but the pass is low, intended for Wachiku. So they'll get points out of it if he can make the field goal and make it a two-point game. Boy, Wachiku was running the fade route to fade stop. Wachiku's just looking back. Whenever the ball's thrown, he will stop. And that ball was underthrown. He had him. If the ball was high, would have been a touchdown to Wachiku. So now Bertolette. There was two of three, made a 50-yarder and a 32-yarder. He missed a 52-yarder. This is a 33-yard try to make it a two-point game. Seven and a half to go. And Bertolette misses it wide to the right. Boy, they blew that opportunity. Great kick return wasted as they had trouble on offense. Hold looked good, spot good, just a bad kick. And it remains 17-12 LSU, but a lot of time left here in the fourth. He knew it right for the injured Braxton Miller for Ohio State. Good bounce back by Purdue after getting shredded on defense the last couple of weeks. Here LSU leads by five with the ball. 7.28 remaining. And it has two timeouts left. They're lining up in shotgun. We'll see if they just pound it here if Mettenberg is allowed to throw. He wasn't allowed to throw on third down and goal from the nine. 9 of 24 passing today with a touchdown, but only 80 yards. They're going to hand it off to Ware, and he's able to stiff arm his way forward for about three yards. Brought down by Stephen Jenkins. That'll take us inside seven minutes for the next snap. LSU trying to go to 7-1, and 3-1 and one in the SEC. Well, it's interesting to me is they're going in a hurry-up situation here. In this situation, you want to eat up as much clock as you possibly could in the huddle. And they're going to throw it. Met murder on the slant completes it to Beckham. That was a strong throw and a first down to the 33 yard line. Is that to say to AM, we're not going to just hand it off here? You still got to be on your toes? Maybe Les Miles says, Sorry, I didn't give you a shot on the last drive. I'll give you a <laughs> shot on this one. Back to the ground and where? Able to break tackles, but flags. This will be holding. Jonathan Stewart was held by the left guard, Lel Collins. And an AM player lost his helmet. That's a big penalty because it's hard to make up second, first, and 20 just running the football, so they almost have to throw the ball now. Ennis will have to go to the sideline for a play, lost his helmet. Holding number 70, offense, 10 yard penalty, second down. Tenth penalty by LSU today. Look like Stephen Jenkins was going to come through. Here's Collins right here. Jenkins was coming through on an A-gap blitz, and he got beat, and he just stuck his arm out and took him to the ground. But anticipate that blitz in the A-gap with those linebackers walked up. A huge penalty potentially. It's first and 20 at the 23-yard line of LSU. Mettenberger in shotgun here. The last time they were in this formation, they ran the ball.
Mettenberger throws, and another strike. That one caught by Boone to the 31-yard line, a gain of eight. From he L looks confident. If I'm LSU right now, if they play off on the outside with these corners, I'm just going to take what they give me. Throw the hitch out there until you force them to come up either roll or play bump and run man coverage, but they're just not doing it. LSU going quickly. Second and 12, Mettenberger. Off target incomplete. It'll be third and 12. So now the clock stopped with 6.02 left. Again, the philosophy, you don't throw when you're on the goal line, but you've let him throw it here on well, the, the bulk of the play. They had to. Yeah, it was first, first and 20. You're not going to get 20 yards just running the ball in between the tackles. So the penalty forced them out of what they really wanted to do on this drive, which was put AM in the meat grinder on the ground running. They're only 2 of 14 on third down. And one of seven, third and eight or longer. This is third and 12. Here comes pressure. It's picked up. And Mettenberger throwing a deep ball for Beckham. Incomplete. But a penalty flag comes down. They're going to get Dustin Harris for interference. He had his hand on him, but I'm not sure he did much to him. I think Dustin Harris got the hand of Beckham at the last minute. Might have pulled on the left arm. That's an appearance, number 22 defense. 15-yard penalty for foul. He may have pulled on the left arm. He definitely has hand on him. Let's see if he pulls. This ball thrown perfectly. He's got the hand, and that is a perfect call. Yep, That's he's an absolutely it. good call. That's the hand that Beckham needs to come up and secure the catch. And Dustin Harris got beat off the line, got beat with speed, and then had no choice but to hold him. So a good call. Kevin Sumlin upset about it, but it's the right call. Third and 12, they get a first down. First down for LSU at its 46-yard line. They go offset in the backfield, and Mettenberger will throw and he's going to go deep and overthrow his man, Nick Jacobs. A lot of overthrows by Mettenberger, but he had pressure in his face that time. However, Jacobs was open downfield. The thing that's consistent with Mettenberger, when he throws the ball down the field, it's been deep. It's been overthrown. And when you have a first down play action hard and a tight end that's wide open, and he was wide open, you want to err on the side of throwing short because he can still go back up and get that ball. He's trying to make the perfect throw every time, and that's why it's being overthrown. Second and ten. They'll run it here. Hill. Great play by Tony Hurt. Cutting down the running back at the line of scrimmage. Texas A&M was nervous about its corners tackling in the open field these 230-pound running backs, but no problem here for her. Now it's third down and 10. They picked up third and 12 on the interference call. During five minutes to play here in the fourth, LSU by five. Mettenberger rolling out, and he'll throw it away. LSU will punt on fourth and ten with 5.03 to go. AM bends but doesn't break defensively. Going to get the ball back on offense now with a little under five minutes left to go. Down five, two timeouts. If you're Johnny Manziel, it's all you can ask for in a big game at home against the number six team in the country. And you've got one of the best return men in the country here, Dustin Harris, who has just flagged for pass interference. We'll see if he gets a shot at a return. Three career returns for touchdowns. This one over his head and into the end zone. That was into the win, and it went 55 yards, but it will come out to the 20. And m will have to go 80 yards in under five minutes. Down five. ESPN College Football available anytime, anywhere on your computer or mobile device via WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Well, the game's on the line now in the last 10 drives for a and We've had four punts, two interceptions, a fumble, two missed field goals, and a made field goal. 
And so it hasn't been pretty. Can Johnny Menzel find a little bit more in the tank to bring his team back? Manziel pulls it back, looking to pass, and Mingo grabs him and throws him aside. Mingo, one of the best pass rushers in college football, and a six-yard loss. Well, you're asking a tight end to block the best, one of the better defensive ends in the country. That was Lamont, and it's just not a matchup. Second and 16, back of the AM, AM 14 yard line of the clock, nearing four minutes to go. And a missed field goal the last time they had the football. Manziel going deep, incomplete. Oh, and then maybe a late hit. Do they throw a flag? They do. Yeah, Reed definitely came in against a defenseless receiver, Mike Evans. The ball was over his head, and Reed came in and clocked him. And Evans is still down on the field. That was a late hit and against a defenseless receiver. Here he took four Reed. steps, Grease. I, I have no idea what the only thing I can say for Reed is that he did he know that he had the ball, but the ball was clearly gone. Personal foul, number one defense, targeting a defenseless receiver, 15 yard penalty, first down. Eric Reed's a smart player. He's an all-American, one of the best safeties in all of college football. And I, I, I don't know why he would do something like this. That ball was clearly gone, but clearly a mistake, even by a senior member of this LSU defense like Eric Reed. I mean, he knew it. He knew the ball was gone, yeah. but he took a shot on Evans, and Evans is still down. Let's check in with Reese Davis in the studio. All right, guys, coming up in just a few minutes, we'll take you out to Kansas. NASCAR Nationwide Series are going to drop the green flag at 347. Of course, NASCAR Countdown's over on ESPN News. Got a great finish, though, first at Kyle Field. All right, Reese. LSU leading by five, but on second and 16, it would have been third and 16. But Eric Reed targeting a defenseless receiver, 15-yard penalty, and a first down for AM. Both of these teams have suffered from penalties today. It has not been the cleanest of games. Texas A&M gave up a touchdown after a, a deep pass interference penalty, and now you give a very dangerous offense another opportunity. Even though you've kept them in check for most of three quarters, you don't want to play with fire in Johnny Manziel. Evans has had a big day, six catches, 76 yards. They'll come to the sideline for now. Four, ten remaining. A&M with a first and ten, two timeouts left. Uh, a lot on the line here, not just in the SEC West, but... LSU, the highest one-loss team in the BCS standings. They still have Alabama and Mississippi State at home. So if they can get this win on the road, they are certainly uh, still in contention for a BCS championship. You have Florida, South Carolina coming up. Two and seven in the BCS standings, respectively. Here's Manziel on first and ten. Going to air it out. And overthrew Swope, who is well covered by Harold Simon. Second down. LSU is playing this three down front again, almost exclusively. And it's there's not been an answer for Texas a and offensively. LSU has contained the perimeter, run to the football with four athletic linebackers and safeties, and they have shut down this AM offense in the second half. LSU rushes five. Manziel has a completion, but Reed with an immediate tackle on Swope. They're going to spot it at the 33, so it's only a four-yard game. What do you expect here from Manziel on third and six? Well, you got to get him, in my opinion, you got to get Swope the football. He is your best player at the skill positions, and he's lined up in the slot, man-to-man -man coverage. They wanted a flag for offside, and they get it thrown. The pass in double coverage. And Lawson intercepts it. But again, it's coming back. It'll be a five-yard offside penalty. How many times has LSU jumped offsides in this game? It's the fifth time that they've done this. And again, I don't know if it's going to be a first down or bring up a third and short. Well, there's two penalties, one on the far side, one on the near side. Could be for the same infraction. There were two fouls, both by the defense. Offside, 
number 49, that penalty is declined. Pass interference, defense, that penalty is accepted, 15 yards, first down. Again, LSU with a foolish penalty. That's 12 penalties, and many of those have resulted in first downs for Texas A&M on what was going to be third and 16, and here what was going to be third and one, because it would have been offside, but they declined that because of the pass interference. So first down as they near midfield. Three and a half to go, a and down five, LSU showing blitz with Mills. Manziel with time, now he's nearly brought down by Mingo and throws, picked up! Intercepted by Simon. And he brings it back into a and territory. Huge turnover by the Aggies there for it. And LSU takes over, leading by five with 3.20 to go. This is the kind of throw that worried Cliff Kingsbury, the throw back across your body. Love the creativity, love extending plays, but here, be smart. See the field, and Simon, veteran player, Bateson, plays the outside, and that's an easy interception for LSU. And you have to imagine that that fourth turnover will pretty much seal this game for LSU. Third interception by Manziel, plus LSU has held Manziel to only 24 rushing yards. And they've done a tremendous job on the redshirt freshman quarterback. Now can LSU seal it by running the football? Taking time off the clock, forcing a to use its timeouts. They have nine in the box. Hill, big hole, 40. Hill to the 30, 20. Hill is gone. Touchdown, LSU. The interception by Simon sets up a 47-yard scamper by Hill. He had a 50-yard touchdown to seal the deal against South Carolina last week. I don't know if there's four better backs in the fourth quarter of games in all of college football than the four that LSU has. These guys wear you down with between Ware and Hill, Hilliard and Ford. Not even to mention Blue, who got hurt early in the year. That is the strength of this LSU team. The point after makes it 24 to 12 with 3-12 to go. This offensive line has been much maligned. Take a look. It's just a stretch play with a lead by the fullback, and you cut back. AM has been good all day inside the tackles. But you can't ask them to continue to stop this deep running game with four turnovers. And they wear you down. They wear you down, and then you get a 230-pound back with speed. And you're going to be hearing a lot about Jeremy Hill for the next four years in Baton Rouge. 24 nothing run by LSU. It was 12 nothing midway through the second quarter. AM was rolling, but Manziel threw the first of three interceptions. Momentum shifted as LSU got it into the end zone. A touchdown run by Ford, and then a touchdown pass by Mettenberger with 11 seconds left in the second quarter. And LSU adding 10 more second-half points. They get a 12-point game. Well, you got the feeling in the first quarter, a and comes out and scores on back-to-back -back drives. And then they get a three and out. We knew LSU's offense has been slow to start in games that a and may be able to hang around in this game, but they're going to look back on this day, say our first opportunity at home against a top flight team in LSU, and we turned the football over four times and didn't give ourselves an opportunity to win. And they had Florida, remember, they led Florida at halftime. Week one here and lost that game because in part of the Gator adjustments at intermission. Trey Williams, who had a long kick return last time, won't even get to the 25 this time. Here's Reese in the studio. All right, guys, we're going to get you up to date on Purdue and Ohio State. 22-14. First and goal, and Kenny Guyton, who is in for the injured Braxton Miller, drops it right into Chris Fields. They need the two-point conversion to force overtime. A little throwback. You know the tight ends out there. And there it is, tied at 22, overtime, Ohio State scored first, 29-22, Purdue's getting the ball. Now NASCAR is going to start, ESPN News, green flag, 
at 347. And now the last chance for AM Swope across the 30, pushed out at the 36. How about Ohio State looking now like it may stay unbeaten, down with four seconds left by eight, and they're leading it over time against Purdue. Well, I know that they're going to miss their quarterback, Braxton Miller, but Kenny Guyton is a heck of a quarterback. Not many people around college football know who he is, but he has got a lot of talent. They're in good hands with him in this game. Here's second down, Manziel to Swope again, but dropped immediately by Mills, who was watching it all the way. 240 remaining, LSU by 12. Again, the Tigers will be off and then play back-to-back -back home games against Alabama and Mississippi State. Still in the national title hunt. They run the ball here to Molina. And the clock continues to run, 225 and counting. And I think, what did we learn today about Louisiana State? Well, we learned that that defense is as good as advertised, and that was not a big surprise. Offensively, there's still a lot of work to do. That passing game is not at the level, in my opinion, that they can challenge Alabama. Manziel throws incomplete. It's fourth down. LSU ends up rushing for 215 yards. Only 98 passing yards to win the SEC and to win a national championship, how much is riding on the ability and play of Mettenberger? Well, what you're going to see when they play Alabama is you're going to see those eight guys in the box, and they're not going to be able to run the ball quite as easy as they have done against South Carolina or as they have done against A&M. It's going to be hard, and Mettenberger is going to have to make plays in the passing game, and his receivers are going to have to make plays. The drop balls and the inability to get open have got to get better if they're going to beat Alabama. Micah Eugene, their nickelback, shaking up here. So you got the bye, then you got Bama at home. You got Mississippi State, Ole Miss at home, and you finish up at Arkansas, which is playing better of late. And the one loss was against Florida. And then the bounce back win last week. They'll come into that game against Alabama having won 22 straight at home. That's a school record and the longest active home win streak in college football. That'll be a night game in Baton Rouge on November the 3rd. So LSU returns home. A&M will hit the road the next three games for them away from College Station at Auburn, at Mississippi State, and at Alabama. So fourth and three for Manziel and the Aggies. Everybody covered. Manziel trying to run, and that's been the story all day. Unable to outrun the LSU speed, but a penalty flag thrown. Maybe on the tackle by Edwards. Did he grab the face mask? Yep. Personal foul, face mask, number 87 defense, 15 yards, previous spot, automatic first down. 13th LSU penalty. I don't know what's worse, the 13 penalties. There you go. You see the face mask from Edwards. And you, know, you, don't, you don't mean to grab a guy's face mask. Sometimes it just happens. Uh, during the course of bringing a guy down, especially a guy as elusive as, as Johnny Manziel, but I don't think I've ever seen a team give up as many first downs on penalties as LSU has in this game. What saved them has been their ability to turn the football over. That was Aga Yeri who committed the foul. Manziel looking for the screen. It's not there. Manziel trying to buy time in the pocket, and that will throw it for Wachiku, and it's out of bounds. They were trying to throw a middle screen. They pumped one side, and then they had Swope in the middle of the field trying to isolate him in man-to-man -man coverage, but just a nice job by LSU in that secondary. You know, I had questions coming in. This secondary for LSU, I mean, we know about the front seven, but with no Tyron Matthew, uh, with Daryl Simon starting for the first time, but then beyond that, you had a bunch of freshmen, and I think they played admirably in this game. Mansell completes it to Sabian Holmes near the first down marker. Big picture, what are now the realistic expectations for Johnny Manziel? Well, I think he's going to continue to make plays. I mean, this is this is a good defense, and he's a redshirt freshman. I think he's going to continue. He'll learn from this experience. There's no question. 
He'll learn from the experience of playing against this this very good defense and I think he'll continue to grow and the sky's the limit for him in this offense and with Cliff Kingsbury at the controls and Kevin Sumlin I think he's got all kinds of opportunity to be a great player going deep here and incomplete intended for Mike Evans defended by Simon I heard you say on Thursday night in the studio with Mark May Scott Van Pelt that if Manziel led them to victory and had a good day that he would be right in the thick of things for the Heisman race because of this performance is he out and we're not talking about well, him for a Heisman so University. I, I, I mean I I didn't I said if he wins this game you have to have that conversation I didn't I don't That's I didn't a, think he was going to come out here and have a Geno Smith performance against LSU. Manziel going for Wachiki got a foot down made the catch inside the 10. That's a great throw there. The throw that he missed to watch a crew on the last drive for the touchdown. This is the same back shoulder throw. This time he gets it up in the air and allows watch to adjust. They just could have really used that conversion on the last drive. Here's Molina gets away from Minko and is in. And we're not done yet in College Station. Still got the onside kick coming. 117 to go. Great effort by Molina. Mingo gets him at about the three and a half yard line. And then Molina keeps, wow, keeps his body parallel and stretches that ball out. Great effort. Got the ball across before any part of his body hit the ground. Touchdown. Fourth rushing touchdown for Molina. And the point after makes it 24 19. You would assume an onside kick is coming, plus AM has two timeouts remaining. This week on ABC Saturday Night Football, many will see rivals clash as Florida State meets Miami. Others will see Baylor and 25th ranked Texas. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows 8, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC and ESPN 3. All right, so two timeouts, a minute 17 remaining. How do you handle this if you're Texas A&M? Do you, do you take a chance and try to squib it downfield? Well, or, or do you definitely onside kick it here? Yeah, the new rule is really going to affect this. Now, you can't drive that ball into the ground on an onside kick and let it go up in the air. So the odds of you getting an onside kick conversion, I think, have gone down significantly. So that may play into Kevin Sumlin's decision here. Maybe he'll squib it down there. But if it were me, I think I would still want to get the ball immediately in an onside kick fashion and maybe you drill it low and hopefully it goes off a leg or a hand. If you don't get the onside kick assuming you get your two timeouts and LSU doesn't get a first down when they punt the football there'd be about 25 seconds left. You wouldn't have a whole lot of time if you get the ball. That's why you can't, it's imperative no, to get yeah, the onside kick you, here. You can't just kick it away. You've got to get the ball here if you're AM. There's no question. We'll see. I've seen a lot of different approaches yeah. to this onside kick. You know, and the, the thing you can't do is drive it into the ground in that high hop, trying to protect the receiving team. Because he decided to drill it low on the ground. Got to go 10 yards before Annan can touch it unless it hits an LSU player first. And Les Miles going to call a timeout. You know, there is that option of trying to kick it straight ahead. Yep. And then have the kicker go get it and you get a block. We saw Arizona State do that successfully yep. late in the game right. against Oregon. It didn't matter at that point when they did it. Reese Davis was there for that. Right now he's in the studio. Try to be all over the place, Dave, if I can. And where I'm taking you right now is to the NASCAR Nationwide Series at Kansas. Not the entire audience. Just reminding you it's on ESPN News and watch ESPN. A little bit behind schedule in terms of dropping the green, but soon they're going to use that gas pedal on the right and start going really fast while they turn left. We'll get you there here on ESPN as soon as the football game is over. You can go to news to watch the race now. Race, we are approaching four hours of game time. AM last week played a four and a half hour game against Louisiana Tech. 24 19, LSU on top. And I'm preparing for an onside kick. If they get possession, they'll have two timeouts and we'll need a touchdown. But that was a good timeout usage by Les Miles and LSU. They saw something they didn't like in the distribution of AM. Now AM has flip-flopped the strength of their formation to the other side of the field, and LSU has to adjust again. 
And here it comes. And that was easy. Beckham recovers it at the 49 yard line. Kick. But as you said, much harder now to convert those onside kicks. And LSU will take over in AM territory. Still, Aggies have two timeouts. Number one team in the land tonight on ESPN. Top ranked Alabama. And the latest chapter of the third Saturday in October. Facing Tennessee, college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Any chance of an upset in that game? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I think Tennessee, while they throw the ball very well, the balance on that offense is, uh, has not been there. And then defensively, I'm not quite sure how they are going to be able to stop that high-powered offense for Alabama. We're both on the ground, and I really think A.J. McCarron uh, has grown into that role in the quarterback position. And not done yet here just yet. Those two timeouts left for AM. Hill gets planted at the 47 yard line, just a couple of yards there on the ground. So second and eight coming up. Well, as mentioned, AM hits the road for the next three games at Auburn, at Mississippi State, at Alabama. And their final SEC game will be home against the other new team in the conference, Missouri, which has not had as much success as A&M so far. I think if you're Texas A&M, you got to feel pretty good about the way that you've started the year in the new SEC. It's the first time in, in, the, in the conference. You played Florida tough, lost by three at home. And you go on the road, you win a couple of games, and now at home against an LSU team that uh, has been historically one of the better teams in the SEC. And you play them toe to toe. I mean, AM has played them toe to toe. The difference in the game is four turn. You turn it over four times, and the other team doesn't turn it over at all, and you're going to lose the game. I don't care who you are. But outside of that, I mean, they have, they didn't get pushed around. They made some plays. And so the future is bright, I think, for AM, and maybe the rest of the year they'll surprise some people. Nine in the box for Texas AM. Here's Hill. And no gain of the play, so another timeout. So third down will come with about a minute five left. Oh, and I'm not electing to use the timeout here. They're going to save it for the third down play. Are you surprised at that decision by Kevin Sumlin, or does it matter at this point? Well, yeah, it, I mean, you're trying to stop the clock. It doesn't matter if you take it now or, or after this play. Either way, uh, that time is going to come off the clock. It'll snap it with about... 28 seconds remaining. Les Miles is going to take it down and then call a timeout with one on the play clock. All right, so 27 seconds remaining and third down coming. All right, so if LSU hangs on here, are they the greatest challenge to Alabama? in the SEC West based on what you've seen so far? Well, I think they, they have the players, right? They, whether they have the quarterback is the question to me, and whether they have the receivers is the question to me. They can run the ball with the best of them, but the balance to me is not where it was a year ago with Jordan Jefferson running the football. They had the element of the option, which I think was a big key in their success last year. When they play Alabama, they are going to be stressed to no end, and if they can't find the balance on offense, it's going to be very difficult for them to win. The wild card? Mississippi State. Absolutely. It's Dan a good Mullen football team. And Tyler Russell, the quarterback. And we saw him week two against Auburn. Granted, Auburn's got all kinds of trouble, but the Mississippi State schedule is very difficult. But they're having a terrific season so far, and they got a very good head coach. Well, that, you know, Alabama's got to play Mississippi State next week while LSU is sitting at home, yeah. getting rested up. So uh, it'll be a very interesting. Alabama's not going to have a breath. I don't think that they're just going to you know, roll the ball out there at Mississippi State and, and win that game running away. So it'll be interesting big, to see how healthy they can they can be coming in. Of course, a big one in the SEC East today with Florida taking on South Carolina. Here's Mettenberger. Great ball fake and a good job to stay in bounds to force a &M to call that final timeout. And if you want to say, well, Mettenberger didn't throw the ball well, 97 yards, but he didn't make mistakes. Did not turn the ball over and a heads up play there to slide before he went out of bounds to make sure that AM used that final timeout. So they'll punt now with 21 seconds. Left. Well, at least we think they'll punt. We'll see what they uh, do here on well, fourth down. The thing that concerns me about LSU is the margin for error is razor thin. And, and they win, they're going to win this football game 
you know, but it's not it's by five points and they got four turnovers you should be winning those games by 14 21 points you know so it's it's not like they've got the kind of offense that can just put teams away and then they can rest easy but everybody knows that right i mean that, that's kind of how it's been it was, how it was two yeah. years ago they went undefeated and lost in the national title game. i heard a lot of talk after last week of the south carolina game that LSU's found the answer on offense. They found the offensive line. The magic potion is back. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. I think they've got fundamental problems on offense. And when they get four turnovers on defense, sure, they can win the game. But when Alabama doesn't turn it over, how's it going to look? So Wing will punt here. A&M has nobody deep, so they'll come after this. No timeouts. 21 seconds left. After the punt, if you don't block it, you got to hustle down there and down the football so you at least give Manziel a chance on offense. The wing will just try to kick it in play here. And they can get close to him. And if you're, man, you're going to go down the football. And clock ticking. LSU, well, team to a stop. So they have to blow the whistle once the ball stops. 10 seconds left, so 11 seconds off the clock. Realistically, maybe two plays for AM here. All right, Johnny Football, you got a, got a miracle in you? <laughs> he has had some miraculous plays this year. Very few of them today. He's, he's gotten away from this defense on a couple of occasions, but he may have won some battles, but the war has been decided. And I think LSU is going to win. Manziel flushed out. And he runs, and he's brought down out of bounds. So one second left. Hard to tell him he was tackled inbounds and then slid out. But they rule him out. So one more play with one second to go. Well, we know this about Manziel. He's going to play till the final whistle. He's going to get every ounce out of this game. There's no quit in him. And and LSU going to call a timeout here before the snap. <laughs> Is Les going to challenge whether he got out of bounds? Well, he lost his challenge already, though. He challenged in the first half, and he won the he challenge. Won the challenge he won the challenge, the so half. he retains the yep. challenge, so he can use it here. Yeah, he challenged that catch uh, by Evans on the sideline where he saw right. the, that look, and, and it was yep. and in, in college favor football, of LSU. If you LSU the has called a timeout to challenge the ruling on the field that the player was out of bounds prior to his knees touching the ground. So if you win your challenge, you retain it. play keeps on a further review. Let's see here, got to be indisputable video evidence that he was out of bounds. Well, obviously, if he was inbounds, Les Miles is hoping that he was down inbounds and the game would be over. And the ruling of the field is out of bounds. Well, he was on top of Montgomery, though. But it's his leg down there. Hard to tell from that angle whether the leg is down. He's on top of Montgomery here. Is that knee down? Is his, is his rear end touching the ground? I didn't see it. It looked like a good call, actually. The linesman was right there on top of it, and I'm not sure I saw evidence to overturn that. You ever seen a walk-off challenge before? <laughs> No, but uh, if I did, I wouldn't be surprised if it was done by that man right there. <laughs> He's the perfect guy to have it happen. The ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner was out of bounds. Please put one second on the game clock. It'll start on the snap. Les is going to be uh, upset about his challenge percentage yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> well, why not, right? You, yeah. You've had it. Yeah, absolutely. Why, why take it with you? One second remaining. Manziel steps up, in trouble, running around, looking for somebody. Manziel lets it fly, and it's caught. Wachiku 
pitches it. Slope's got it. And throws it to an offensive lineman. They're still going. Here's Wachiku. Gets outside. Got to throw it back. He does. Give it to Manziel. There you yeah. go. Manziel's got it now. Breaks the tackle. Pitches it to Slope. Slope oh, gets boy. crushed. But wait. It's still a free ball. And now oh. LSU recovers and the game is over. <laughs> Did you Even expect the anything else? <laughs> Even the Hatter smiles after that one big road win for LSU. 24-19 at College Station. Four-hour game. NASCAR Nationwide Series at Kansas.